still muted. No, no, the mic was muted. Oh, folks, hello, hello and welcome. I need to make this music stop for me. This is how insanity begins. This is it. <laughs> oh, folks, I cannot make it stop. Hold on. Ah, oh, sweet relief. I don't know if you all continued to hear music after it stopped playing, but these are the pieces of insanity of your mind when it just starts to flake apart and float off into the rifts in reality that are being caused all around you. You know what I mean? <sighs> All right, cool, 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 cool. Um, so glad that you're all here this evening for the Calyx. We have an amazing adventure in store for you. Uh, and I can't wait to get right into it and introduce our guests. But first, I, I want to introduce uh, our sponsor, Chaosium, the best sponsor any gal could ever ask for. They're incredible. They gave me this nifty code if you buy something at chaosium.com and you use the calyx you're gonna get 10 percent off which is so great like that's just that's you're gonna go there and get stuff anyways um after after i showed up <laughs> i can't stop getting things from chaosium and um my latest obsession which if you go to their website you'll notice this is like the new thing is uh, a bestiary this is uh, for, you know, collectors and, and game players alike. It is a bestiary of all the Cthulhu's Mythos monsters. And it comes in this beautiful slipcover. I couldn't put them all the way back in because um, there might be some post-it notes in mine already. Uh, there's two volumes. There are uh, the bestiary and then separately uh, the deities. Oh, monsters of the mythos and deities of the mythos. And... And something I'm very excited about, uh, I'm excited about all of it, if you couldn't tell. Um, there's also, it's called the Malleus Monstrorum. That's the name of the, the double-decker volume you saw right there. But also there's a Keeper deck, which is, you know, a deck of monster cards that has their stats on the back. That this is, this is so helpful. It's so helpful to keep a ring. And uh, you can also play the fun game of randomly grabbing one out of oh god oh god uh you know for example the death finds of ixlotl i'm sorry i'm sorry to my uh lore aficionados that know i pronounced that really wrong i don't even know why i pulled a card out of a cthulhu deck without knowing that i would know how to pronounce that thing ahead of time what was i thinking but a uh, super sweet and terrifying card you could just scare your friends with the scenario you create about that. Um, <laughs> anyway, Wellspring of Scenario seeds and inspiration for you there. And uh, I told you about the code and that's all you need to know, except one more thing you might want to know is that tonight's scenario is a published one from Mansions of Madness. I will tell you no more about tonight's scenario because we're going to get into it, folks. Oh, gosh. Did I not turn off alerts on my computer? Jeez, computer, don't do that to me. Uh, all right. So without further ado, let me bring in. Uh, we'll, we'll start in uh, the order in which they arrived. Uh, let's bring in an expert role player, a crafter, uh, a puppeteer, a puppet maker, uh, a doer of all the things and streamer of all the streams. Um, not only does she make many things, she's also on Clear Skies on Q Times, Failed Save on the Pixel Circus, and probably 10,000 other things that I forgot to mention. Gina DeVivo. Hello. Hi. That was all, that was all the things. That was correct. <laughs> I I tried. I tried. I thought really hard. What what is it? I I I just like reached out to you telepathically and I was like, yes. "What's she up to?" That's my research. Also your Twitter. Those are both things that are just present in the brain all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um how you doing? Doing well. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, chat. <laughs> um, more importantly, how is Evelyn Ward doing? Not more importantly. 
It is a little bit more importantly, I would argue that Evelyn absolutely believes that she is far more important because she's got the brains and the looks. Absolutely. Um, I'm so excited to find out more about the scholar that knows everything about books and little about uh, how not to die when confronted with cthulhu beings. Yes, um, it is quite a topic of study of mine, how not to die. And you're getting better and better, except for that time your friend shot you. Yes, except that. But I have a handy dandy cane now, and all is good. I love it. Devils as all a right. weapon. I'm very excited for Evelyn uh, to uh, to see her in action with her new friends. Um, and next, let's bring out new to the Calyx, but not new to my heart. Uh, we have an actor, a singer, a poet, a streamer, a doer of all the things, and a dear, dear friend, Jessa Day. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi, Hi chat. How you doing? Uh, I'll wait for them to respond. And I think I think good. I think good is what they said. Uh, <laughs> Jessa, I love um, that you had this wig just laying around. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> me too. It was perfect. For the character. And, and, it's super and fun. Uh, I can't wait to meet Tulip Beal, the bounty hunter. Yes, Tulip is really excited to be a part of tonight's adventure. She's got a lot in store for you. Let me tell you. Excellent. And without further ado, we have brought back another dear, dear friend that uh, is also on all of the streams, is an incredible DM, GM, uh, has a podcast about Avatar The Last Airbender, which I just found out about and need to go check out, is also on Failed Save on Pixel Circus, a DM of Salt Bay at Saving Throw, and probably more things I'm also leaving out, Abria Ayengar. Hello, that's the things, you're good. <laughs> Yay, so many things. Hi. How we managed to stay so busy when we can't leave this spot. I live in this chair. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, every once in a while, I remember to go outside and like take a deep breath in the outside air before I come back to sitting here Ooh. for hours at a time. It's wild. The outside yeah. air is yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I found purple juice. Mm. Mm. I got so excited. I was like, it matches the background and my mood. What is purple juice? Uh, it's Empress Gin. Ooh. It's literally just purple gin. Hey. That's amazing. I mean, beverage, I don't know what we could talk about here. Is this a Christian Minecraft channel? <sighs> okay, cool. No, it ain't. It's liquor. Uh, mine is apple juice. Made from fine scotch. <laughs> <laughs> it was backwards uh, distilled. Uh, and Cass Silverfish Sterling is returning once again after nearly escaping with her life and her sanity out of um, a very uh, enchanted house. Uh, haunted it implies ghosty. This was more of an otherworldly being. I mean, feels haunted. There was just one guy many times. So I'm gonna say haunted by one dude who the yes. gym tells me his name was Tad. Yeah, it was like a Todd, like a Todd. <laughs> uh, servant of Nyarlathotep um, and uh, 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 invited you to be a dancer in the court of Azathoth for all eternity, um, which you turned Chill down. Us. Yeah, where? All right, uh, well tonight, is an all new adventure. Shall we get into it? Yes. All right. Wait, what do you mean adventure? I retired to a simple life of selling alcohol under the government's nose. That's what you think, Cass. Uh, well, you three friends have retired for a quiet, quiet um, two week long stay. Uh, well, for Tulip, it, it, it's kind of open ended how long you'll be staying in this beautiful, old home in a suburb of Boston. This home is owned by Mimi Beale, an old firecracker who is uh, kind of bedridden at this point. Uh, in fact, mostly bedridden. She can, she can make her way to the bathroom and that's about it and has asked her granddaughter Tulip to come stay with her uh, as she's, you know, 
disappointingly become an invalid in her old age and has asked Tulip to come and stay. Tulip, uh, uh, I know your friends, uh, your friends are about to arrive, but uh, could you, did you, did you make the beds? Mimi, I made the beds for oh, the yes. third time I made the beds. And you did the shopping? I did the shopping. I've got the kettle on, everything's put away. Don't you worry about a thing, Mimi. Yes. I wish you would lose that atrocious accent. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, grown up. I'm sorry I haven't grown up enough in Boston to establish your Boston accent. Well, I just think that a lady who is about to inherit a fine home when I finally kick the bucket should be able to present herself uh, in a certain way. Yes, Mimi, yes. I hear you. I hear you. Right, right. Did you tell your friends in your letter I could die at any moment? I said you would love to see them before, you know, that you would love to see them. Yes, well, we'll see. We'll see if they get here before I croak. Could it's you pour me a drink? Eggs before the hatched. You're fine. I am so grateful that you have hmm? You still got some Sprite in you, Mimi. That's my girl. Uh, the doorbell rings just then. It's an old-timey bell. It has many chimes to it and actually attaches in, in the uh, foyer to a system of actual bells. If you're standing there, you can see them ringing in the wall. And uh, Evelyn Ward and Cass Sterling, uh, you're out on, on the uh, stoop. As you look around, that the neighbor girls. I'm going to go fetch them. You stay here. All right, do it. Do it. Do as you must. But bring me a stiff drink on your way back. Uh, I got gotcha. you. We cut to the uh, the stoop, and Evelyn and Cass, as you look around, you notice this street is eerily pleasant. Every uh, bush is trimmed. Every car is, is washed in if they have one in the drive. Uh, I guess that would be rather rare in the 20s. Not everyone had a car. Um, and as you look around, uh, uh, do you know one another? Yes. It, it's, thank you for um, picking me up. Uh, I, I did not um, want to hire a car. I totally understand. Don't worry about it. Uh, thanks for coming with me, Evie, and letting me pitch you the entire drive here on why you should be a little more hands-on in the... Uh, chemistry of my business. <laughs> hey, well, hands-on is, is is a very horrifying term of mine. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. How about uh, um, how about we stick with the hands-off approach um, mm -hmm. where where I continue to provide um, recipes if I invent them and 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 I will occasionally consume your delicious booze. <laughs> Honestly, that works for me as long as it works for you. Uh, how long is this ding dang bell gonna ring? I don't all know. All of Notre Dame in there. Ladies, ladies, the ladies, are open. ladies, ladies, welcome to Mimi's. I'm sure you'll be familiar. It's been a while, but she's been calling you both. I've got the kettle on, chamomile tea for you, Evelyn, and an espresso for you, Cassidy, because I know you've been working those late nights at the club. Come on two, in. Two of you are a shy and retiring summer flower at something southern very reassuring thank you for having us and she just pushes right in <laughs> you remember um, where the kitchen is and as you have your bags and your arms um then you place them in the foyer and you look around there is a a grand um parlor room to the right you can see the kitchen ahead of you the stairs leading up uh, and you can see through to actually um, Mimi has set up her bed or had Tulip do it in the dining room so she can be on the first floor uh, and, and calls out for you to come to her. Oh, there's Mimi calling. Well, then I better scoot inside. It's really good to see you, Tulip. It's Excuse me. You, Evelyn. Excuse me. Sorry. I'm going to scoot on through. No worries. I'm going to have you on. There's plenty of rooms upstairs. Just pick one. Uh, Tulip says she made the beds. I don't know how well she made them. I'm sure it's fine as long as mine's the biggest. 
<laughs> Don't worry, Evelyn. And and Cass, I, ma I made sure to give you your respected rooms, the ones that you like. It's very so nice. Hello, Mima. <laughs> How it's are me. you? I'm dying. And you? You are not dying. If you're mm. dying, I'm also dying. She's been saying that every day. She's fine. Trust me, I, I know the feeling. I had that phase as well. And I smacked the, the tip of her bed with my cane. You better knock it off. Right. <laughs> and were you 87 uh, in this time? You know, the pain, it's deep in my bones. And that's why we have your medicine, Mimi. Did you and take you it this morning like I told you to? It's too far to reach. My medicine's oh my right goodness. here. I was going to say, I also came prepared with some medicine. <laughs> Mimi, we all know that more uh, the more that's in your bones rather than old age is stubbornness. Mm. And Juniper. Who wants gin? Oh, me! <laughs> I'll go grab some. I brought my own glass. Tulip, as you head into the kitchen, you see on the countertop uh, the bountiful basket of fresh vegetables that was delivered this morning by your neighbor, Mr. Corbett. Ah, oh, that Mr. Corbett. How lovely. There are zucchinis and carrots and uh, a cauliflower head. Um, it, it seems impressive that he could grow all these things in the suburban environment, but uh, he's very dedicated to his work and he loves to share it uh, with, with you. He stopped by to chat this morning. Absolutely magnificent. Be great for a salad later. Uh, as the evening wears on, I assume that you perhaps retire to the parlor <clears throat> after dinner for a few drinks as Mimi sort of nods off in the next room. And uh, as the clock strikes seven o'clock, can I have each of you roll for spot hidden? Yes. Yeah, first roll. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Oh. Oh my God. Can I use four luck points to make this roll, please? <laughs> you, uh, let's, you can, but you might want to see if, if someone else is able to succeed. You don't all have to. Tulip got a 44. Is that a success for you? <laughs> Spot hidden at 45. So, right it. There. all right. So Tulip, uh, you see um, there's grand windows that sort of have a stained glass, uh, like like Gina's background there. They have a stained glass uh, above the main window in ornate abstract designs and, and a beautiful wide open window. And you see a car pull into the driveway across the street that you know very well. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice uh, red car. And um, as you start to wave, you see Mr. Corbett get out of the car and he doesn't notice you, but he goes to the trunk of the car and pops it open uh, just an inch. And then he looks to the left and right of the houses on either side. And uh, he opens the trunk more and he pulls out two canvas wrapped packages. And Mimi asks, did you thank him, Tulip? Did you thank him earlier this morning when he came around? I, I did, Mimi. I did. Oh, excellent. Uh, 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 Tulip, could you, could you, I hate to ask, but my bedpan is full. All right, Mimi. No worries. I'll take care of it. I was going to volunteer. I'm going to leave this one to you. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. I'll take care of this. I'm going to crush in your drink while you... I'm an invalid. I'm disgusting. Deal with it, ladies. This is what you signed up for. Mimi, you are not disgusting. Here's to that. Man, <laughs> you're human. Don't mm -hmm. worry about a thing. I rolled terribly on my observant roll, so I am, I'm a couple coops in. As it was. Uh, yeah. Cheers. Gavin <laughs> takes her cane and starts, uh, without any music, just dancing around the living room oh. a little bit. Oh, this reminds me of the first day we met, Cass. You it gets on were, the table. You were a gift and a curse to that mm -hmm. one. It was my favorite table, but I'm, 
I'm sorry. I paid no. for it. I paid no for regrets. it. No regrets. Yes. No regrets. Thank you. And uh, Cass is just going to kind of hum along to whatever beat Evelyn's just vibing on right now. It's a, it's a lot of trumpets. And yeah. Yeah. Evelyn, <laughs> Evelyn danced and partied after um, after sending the <laughs> Biaki mother back to her own realm uh, and delivering her eggs to her and then partying at the the Thirsty Fish. Thirsty Fish. Right. Um, oh, Tulip, as, as you still keep your eye out the window as you get up to get Mimi's bedpan and uh, you see he 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 seems to really be hurrying to the door with these two ca canvas packages on, under his arm. One of them is um, about a, a foot long, and and the other is a smaller package, like maybe the size of a steak. And um, as he gets to the door, he seems to be fumbling a bit, sweet Mister Corbett, and. He drops one of the canvas packages, and uh, this round package rolls just a bit down the driveway, which is slanted downward, and the canvas unravels around it, and you see something pale and uh, elongated and cylindrical roll down to the foot of the driveway, which he goes immediately running after to pick it back up. And you see him? Oh, yeah. Evelyn. Cassidy, do you mind yeah. watching Mimi for a second? I'm just gonna go across the street to see what Mr. Corbett's up to. I think he needs a little help. Oh, sure, dear. You're so thoughtful. Oh, I saw him out the window. He looks like he's having some trouble. Oh, your yeah. drink's melting. I'll take care of it. Thank you. And so Tulip exits the home and uh, goes to approach Mr. Corbett. Uh, Mr. As Corbett. you do. I'm going to need you to make one more spot hidden roll for me. Okay. 81. Okay. Oh, uh, one more rule that I have forgotten to mention to you, Jessa, and I think uh, I, I should do so. Um, you may always push a roll unless you are in combat. A pushed roll means you roll again, but if you fail the second time, there will be dire consequences. Um, that's always an option, so long as we're not in the middle of combat, because in combat, it'll come back around to you and you'll get another chance to roll right. out a different- I'll action. push for another roll. Um, uh, and if you do so, please explain to me the way in which you're you know, going to the next level with your, uh, like um, something about his behavior perhaps was suspicious. And so you're sort of looking him up and down perhaps? As long as I've known Mr. Corbett, he has always been a nice fella, a nice neighbor, a nice man. And this is some odd behavior that I'm noticing about him. By the way, I re-rolled and I got a one. <gasps> yeah! Yeah! Oh! Yeah! That's a critical success. Really? Uh, can you please check? Well, it was pushed, actually. Don't check it. But um, in the future, when you roll a one, naturally, you can get to check it. Okay. Uh, you see him scrambling. He seems that he's set down the other canvas package right on the stoop and he was running after this thing, grabbing up the canvas and flopping it down over the item that had rolled out. But before he was able to cover it, you saw tiny fingers on the end of this pale cylindrical object. Oh. And you can clearly see before he covers it that it seems to be a child forearm. Mr. Corbett. Miss Tulip. Uh, <clears throat> Miss um, Tulip. Hello. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Mr. Corbett. Uh, did you enjoy the vegetables that I brought this morning? I did, thank you. But <clears throat> do my eyes deceive me? I see something strange under your canvas there, sir. What do you have there? A, a tree limb. A tree limb. Yes, right. it has a strange fungus growing on it, and I thought it would be important for my studies of uh, um, different fertilizers for exotic plants. I mean, anyway, I, mean, oh, you, I know I'm you so are late. seasoned in gardening, but uh, Mr. Corbett, let me help you. You seem to be struggling there with your... Oh, I'm fine, and he seems to have gotten it wrapped back up uh, without exposing to you again what it was, sort of turning the canvas towards himself and putting it under his arm. Uh, and 
I, yeah, yeah, it is, I would love to come visit you and Mimi, perhaps, in the morning. I've, I've just remembered I've forgotten to feed my fish. Yes, on Sundays like this, I, I come home late and, um, my, my fish and other pets, uh, they must be fed immediately. And, and so, uh, I'll see you in the morning, perhaps. Yes, good day, Tulip. Good day, Mr. Colbert. He picks up the other canvas package. He fumbles with the door a bit, awkwardly smiling and looking over his shoulder at you as he does. And then he gets inside and closes the door and you hear the deadbolt shut. Strange. All right. I go back home to Mimi's. Evelyn, Cassidy, you will not believe what I have just seen. Hang on, Mimi is cheating. There is definitely an ace up your sleeve. <laughs> All right. Is it weirder than the bedpan? Because that's why you left. Let a dying woman cheat at cards, Evelyn. The first Mimi, isn't it past like your bedtime? The hour's the hour is late. You it's seven. Take, take your bedtime medicine and go to sleep. I need to talk to the girls. Oh, is everything all right, Tulip? No, you, everything is not all right. I you can say right. them. You could say to me, and I cannot go anywhere. Mimi, I don't know if this talk is good for your health, and I do not want to startle you. You know it's not good for my health. Death. But it's coming. I feel it. A little more well, enjoyment. Mimi, I if you love this. this, I mean, you've been living here for so many years. Maybe there's something you know about this. Now, I just saw something strange. Mr. Corbett, very nice man. I mean, he left us the vegetables. You know how he likes his gardening. He took something out of his trunk and I was looking out the window and I saw something strange. He had something uh, kind of like a canvas wrapped and uh, some sort of object. And I could have sworn I saw a child's forearm and fingers coming out. He dropped it and then quickly covered it up when I came to, to ask him about it and then acted very strange and, and shooed me off and said he forgot to feed his fishes. There's something up uh, come across the street. I'm telling you, I don't, it doesn't feel right. Mimi, have you ever seen Mr. Corbett act this strange before? Have you ever seen Mr. Corbett own a fish? Hmm. Actually, I don't think I've ever been inside Mr. Corbett's house. I I've always seen him outside on the street. Uh, you know, just in passing, saying hello. I mean, I've known him since I was a child, but I've never been inside his home. That's interesting you say that. Yes, after his wife died, I I don't think I ever went inside his home again. He, he stopped entertaining, you see. He really withdrew. Hmm. Death will do that. I'm sure you, Tulip, will be devastated when I'm gone, which could be any moment. <sighs> You'll be right. You've been saying that for the past two years. Yeah. Honestly, I think you have many ahead of you. You just you just need some good eating and some nice rest. Yes. But Speaking to your point, I, I I don't know whether or not he has a fish. But I do know well he doesn't seem to have people over much. I, I do see him on Sundays such as this coming back rather late in the evening, yes. Strange. Yeah. Oh, far be it for me to, you know, step on what has become a guiding principle of my life, which is when you go into a large, nice white person house, something terrible happens. <laughs> but is there any other explanation that could explain what appeared from across the street to be a baby arm? I, I saw what I saw. Cassidy, I don't know how to explain it, but I will say he did. I believe you. He did say I'd, I'd see him in the morning, so I think come morning we should pop on by, and uh, why don't we bring him some of Evelyn's, uh, you know, famous pastries? I, I feel like we could bring him a treat, and maybe he might uh, allow us inside, and we can see what's going on. Are you intending to kill him? My what? Hey, we got to murder very quickly. Excuse me. Well, if, she, if 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 Tulip is offering my baked goods, um, <laughs> not those baked goods, Evelyn. <laughs> that aren't the human kind. I'm sorry. It's just it's. I know when we were young, I could I could whip up some some buttered biscuits, but that skill has long, long since lost. I've replaced it with other facts. 
But I, mean, I can try. I, I bet Mimi's got some recipes we can cook up. Oh, yes. yes. There's a book in the kitchen, but I will tell you, my taste buds are lesser and lesser with each passing day. So make it strong. Maybe pour some brandy into your biscuit mix. Oh, that's, that's disgusting. Bad. No, don't do that. No? Have you uh, ever had a like, whiskey soda bread kind of deal? Everything is better mm. with whiskey, Silverfish. Now, I am a literal rum runner, and I do not believe you, but I will try <laughs> it because I like to keep my mind open. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, in the suburbs, uh, uh, we do our best. I, I won't say open minds are the things known best, but you know, if you want to learn more about uh, Mr. Corbett, well, Miss Harriet Hart and, and her living companion living next door, just right over next to Mr. Corbett, oh. they always seem to know every coming and going. I can't be bothered. I've got... Mimi, you said Harriet Hart? Harriet. Harriet. Harriet and Rebecca. I think I remember I what I think we've been doing in there all these years, but I suppose we can pop on by over there before we hit up Mr. Corbett's. Oh my, are we in for an evening of snooping? I, I do am. love snooping. And I do love a good mystery. And I'm something telling you, something smells fishy. Tulip, <laughs> Tulip, I must ask, what did Mr. Corbett say the baby arm was? Uh, some sort of tree branch, but it, I don't know. I just saw a flash of it. Silverfish, you, you, what, you, what, what kind of tree branch looks like a baby arm? I don't know anything about plants. <laughs> I know quite a bit, but I think if we got a little closer to it. Now, I think you two are rubbing off on me and the gin is having uh, <laughs> its own say in my nocturnal activities. But I don't think waiting until morning is the way to go here. We should yeah. just go and find the baby hand ourselves. <laughs> I'm, I'm full of the Empress and I'm with Silverfish. Yeah, I'm hopefully it's a weird ficus and we can all come back to drinking and listening to Mimi be miserable. Cassidy, you are always a night owl. All right. <laughs> okay, let me put Mimi down for bed. For now. I I think down. Down. Uh, <laughs> now don't be going and having a potty here while we leave in and to go figure out what's going That's on. Disgusting. I wouldn't oh, I can get up. I just wanted you to fill the bedpan, uh empty the bedpan. Would you <laughs> turn me over and rub my bed sores though? I'll put some I ointment on them. You do you not make her get up and walk. You know, Mimi, I really love you. I really do. I provide adventure in your life. Admit it. <laughs> yes, you do, Mimi. Yes, you All right. do. Uh, so you're deciding to venture out tonight to not wait until morning? Yes. All right. Describe to me what you'd like to do and uh, if you have anything with you or if there's anything you'd like to take from the house as you leave. Um, well, in order to help um, <laughs> and, and, and me, because I... I I have heard me, uh, Tulip discuss that Mimi gets quite lonely. Um, so I would like to aid um, in some sort of a, a remedy or, or some sleep aid um, with the, the sores with my first aid capabilities. Awesome. Just to make sure Mimi's more comfortable while we're all out. Evelyn, make sure to give her the extra dose for that sleep aid. <laughs> <laughs> Double scoops. Evie, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> Come, give, give me, give me what you've got. Okay, give me a roll for first aid. I'm gonna give her the good stuff. The good stuff. Really good. Oh, stuff. yes, success. Was uh, awesome. Go ahead and check. And I need to get an under 51. Nice, go ahead and check first aid. All right. Uh, and uh, for everyone watching, uh, if you're new to Call of Cthulhu, if you succeed on a skill check on, on your first attempt, then you can check that box and when, you know, in between sessions or in between scenarios, uh, whatever your keeper would like, then, um, you can level up that skill by, uh, an improvement check. All right. Um, awesome. Give, give Mimi the wink when I hand her the, the medicine. 
Yes, she takes it and she looks at you and she her head lifts off the pillow for just a moment and you see this this flash of youthful energy in her eyes and she says, I have an idea. And then she passes out on the pillow, just like snoring loudly. <laughs> uh, God bless us all. All I right. Her idea was a nap. <laughs> Evelyn, uh, yes. the crossbow you're profession proficient at, is it um, in the luggage that you brought with you? Yes, ever since my encounter last time, I do not go anywhere without a weapon, though I have, I, I, I don't think I would bring it in this specific instance across the street, but I do have it in my luggage. Perfect. But but for now, my, my cane is, is all the defense I need. Excellent. Does anybody else bring anything with them? Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm def I definitely keep my little, like, derringer that, like, stays in a garter belt. So that's it's a little yes. tiny, a little tiny thigh gun. Woman's got a book. I love yeah. that gun. <laughs> Tulip also carries a .38 automatic on her when she ventures out. Never know when you're going to need it. She mostly uses it to threaten targets, but will fire if necessary. All right. The sun has set. Uh, it is a fall day. Let's say it's September. And uh, it's a, a little chilly outside. Um, it's about, I'm going to say, just about 9 o'clock now. You've been playing cards for a while and thinking about what to do. Um, and do you go across the street? Do we want to go talk to Mr. Corbett or head up and see the neighbor? Well, Mimi said there was Harriet and Rebecca. I think we should try to talk with them first before talking to Mr. Corbett. He seemed insistent on not being available until morning. We could try, but maybe we should ask around. Now, is Mr. Corbett a young man, Tulip? No, I mean, I've known him since I was a child. Uh, he's he's much older now. Maybe a little bit younger than Mimi, but uh, an older man, yeah. So do you think there's some value in trying to wait him out and hope that like Mimi, he goes to bed kind of early and we can sneak in and find things for ourselves. Ooh, I like the way you think, Miss Cassidy. You know. Keep an eye on the shutters. Mm. We could take a peep. It wouldn't hurt to try. Just as uh, you say that you're wondering whether he's an early to bed type of fellow, you see as you're walking across the street to uh, the left of the driveway, there's a small basement window, and um, you see a curtain drawn across it and the light go out. Then uh, you see that there is a light on upstairs, and you see that light go out and up to the second floor. Uh, just a, one light on the second floor is now on. Well, we certainly now know where he was before he retired to bed. I can see that as well. Okay, okay. That's good, let's ankle it on over across the street. I can't believe we're doing this, but at the same time, I know you both. <laughs> okay, one of us is an actual bounty hunter. <laughs> this is also true. I am just the kind of person you call on the phone when something bad happens. I, that but doesn't mean I break the law, I bend it. All right, let's take a peep at this basement. Uh, so you guys are walking across the street, and you're walking towards the basement window where you saw the light go out? Yes. Now everybody give me a roll for stealth. Or if you prefer, okay. we could go with luck. Up to you. Let me check. I'm going to do oof, luck isn't great, but we'll give it a shot. I, I might do luck. Actually, I am. Uh, I I think I should give you a chance to improve your luck in the same way that you would improve a skill to Gina and Abria, uh, because you have played a session or two that may have depleted your luck. So you can go ahead and, and uh, do that if you prefer. I don't remember how to do a luck roll. Can you All right. remind um, me? So uh, if you're rolling for luck, luck can be used uh, as a skill just like any other. It is also a resource, and you may spend luck points one for one in order to improve a roll. Um, you can't do this for sanity rolls, and you can't do it for other luck rolls, obviously, because the math there doesn't work out. Um, and you cannot do it in combat. 
Okay. Um, so uh, I roll it as a general skill if I'm using luck as my trait. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to let you improve it. So to improve any skill that is checked or to improve luck, if you're allowed to do so between sessions, you're going to try and roll higher than your current skill level. Okay. You see there, roll another D10 and add that much to your luck score. Okay. My luck improved by one. Your dice just really like to roll one when you're wow. <laughs> it just give me a chance and then let me down. <laughs> we improved um, some skills from your previous session before uh, we started, and uh, you got one in the two things you improved on there, too. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled so incredibly if I wasn't rolling to improve my luck. <laughs> no! I rolled a seven. Nice. Oh no! That's terrible for this particular instance. Is so only my seven or no? Neither. I didn't roll above my luck, so I don't get to improve uh, it at all. And if I just okay. rolled stealth, I would have succeeded. <laughs> well, I rolled stealth, and I rolled a six. All right. Hey, oh, you I rolled a twenty-two on stealth. All right. Luck. Now I'm rolling regular luck. Yeah. And of course, that's oh. when. I'm way too drunk, everyone. <laughs> oh, no. I just you rolled a 79. Oh, on I my... grab the cup out of Evelyn's hand as we no, go outside and fling it into the bush. Wow. <laughs> had enough, Evelyn. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. No. Uh, and then, Cass, how did you roll? 22. Nice. Under okay. my 38. Perfect. Good success. Okay. So uh, let's describe what happens here. Tulip, you are an epic bounty hunter. You rolled solo. You uh, sort of somersault across the street and then army crawl through the grass and you're at the window as Evelyn with her cane stumbles along. Oh, oh my drink, my drink. <laughs> and then she just silent, um, silent crying because that yeah. was a good gin. And, but Cass, you also pass silently without being noticed. Um, Evelyn, you see next door the curtains slam open and you see uh, an older woman who is very frail looking but with a, a, a searching eye looking around it points at you for just a moment and then you see um a woman maybe in her uh early 50s come over that is sort of like kind of matronly looking that ushers the woman away from the window and closes the curtains uh, in the house next to Corbett's. Ah, I very, very mildly under my breath, just mind your business as I <laughs> do her away with my cane. <laughs> After they've already left, it's a little bit of a delay on my response. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, luckily, you're not too intimidating looking, so I don't no. know that they called the cops. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> didn't I look very up too much. <laughs> being disorderly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you look very what? Shriveled. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. All right. Um, Tulip, describe to me what you're doing when you get to the house. So I'm looking through the basement, the window, and I'm trying to see if there, if it's unlocked, if there is a, a little crevice or opening to undo the latch. Mm, okay. Mm. Yes. I think that there is a latch on the inside. Can you roll for luck for me yes. to see if it's unlocked? Really? Uh, so I rolled a 30 and my luck is 40. Okay, that's a success. Uh, the window is unlocked. It's about two feet wide and one foot tall, and it does have little curtains in front of it. Uh, it kind of was an older window. It seemed like it was closed sturdily, but if you just give it a little, uh, a hearty push, then the paint that was holding it shut sort of um, makes it fall in, and um, and it's now sitting open. I'm in. Okay, the curtains are still closed, a, a little rung right in front of it. I mean, you I have access. Evelyn, <laughs> would you happen to have a match? Oh, a match? Uh, do you mean for light purposes or arson and pur pur purposes? For light purposes, Evelyn. Oh, oh okay. I'm not going to burn down the old mm. man. Um, <laughs> I do, actually. I do have matches. Would you look at that? Bless pockets. <laughs> Sugar, can I have one, please? Oh, I lit it for you. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. 
Tulip kind of puts her head past the curtains and holds the match right in front of her, seeing if she can see anything in the dark. The room has a cement floor, rough drywall walls uh, that are sort of crumbling, and, and and then you hear a something sort of seems to skitter in the corner. And as you look to the back right corner, you see a woman's face, <gasps> and then you see two legs protruding out of either side of the face. It hisses as yet you. <laughs> and skitters into the shadows right underneath the window. I'm gonna need you to roll for Sanity Tulip. I got a 99. Oh! <gasps> That's what we call a fumble. It's um, like, uh, you know, a, a critical fail, almost as bad as 100, but not uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so you are going to lose some amount of sanity, that is. Uh, a D3, um, so that's going to be two sanity. Okay, so I just put two in my current sanity? Uh, oh. It's going to go down by two. So what was your beginning sanity? It was 50? Yeah, right. so your current oh, sanity is 48. All right. Uh, I'm going to say that you drop the match. It falls to the cement floor, and it uh, you hear uh, the woman thing make a kind of sound and then the light snuffs out. Tulip, are you stuck? You're making weird sounds. Evelyn, Evelyn, I just saw something. Something not human. Not not a critter of this earth. Uh, a face. A woman's face with, with baby legs coming out the side of its where the ears should have been. I swear to God. I saw something not of this earth. Baby legs where ears should be? I saw what I saw. I have goosebumps. I, do, I don't know what to make of it. I, I dropped the match. Uh, it scuttled into the dark, but there is something down there in that basement. I, I swear to you. Oh, I believe you. I believe you too. The question is, what do you want to do about it? Did it seem unfriendly? It hissed at me. I don't think that's well, friendly. So does a cat. All. It doesn't mean it's mean. I'm, that's what and that's what that means. Well, it doesn't mean you should kill it. Is what I mean. Means you should stay away. But I don't know what to do this here. This thing usually place. implies fear and not a, a aggression. You're right, Evelyn. Uh, being an animal loving creature, you would know. Uh, Perhaps, perhaps we try to um, uh, bait it out. I've brought the whiskey biscuits. I have some, uh, I don't know if it would like this, but I've always got a, some doggy treats in my pockets. We could try both. Two good options. What you got, Silverfish? Oh, I don't know, maybe talking to her. But then I thought maybe she can't hear because she has legs for ears. And I just want to circle back to that. I'm sorry, I'm yelling. It's late, but this is an old beeper neighborhood, so I'm not that worried about it. There was a woman with legs for ears, and I feel like we are missing the point. Why do you want to give it a treat? <laughs> the curtain is open. Um, I imagine that the, the window is sort of like flops inward into the basement and then it just sort of sits there like a flat shelf uh, and you see over the top of the window a hand just sort of grabbing on and starting to pull itself up onto the little window ledge. Which hand? <laughs> the baby hand that her ears <laughs> the other hand? And you see a, a small foot flop on uh, as if it's like a, you know, like a um, like a rock climber pulling themselves up onto a ledge when you swing and a leg over. Uh -huh. so there's a hand and there's a leg. And then on the other side, there's a leg. Okay, there's before you get that last one over, hold up, hold up. Do you talk and are you cool? <laughs> Cause I will, you seem small and I will hit you. <laughs> Cat, 
Cassidy, I don't think it speaks. Okay. Well, you know, know. I guess it's give it a biscuit. <laughs> You throw a biscuit at it? Yep. Tulip starts throwing doggy treats at it as well. It, it falls backwards. Uh, when, actually, give me a throw check. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. You were aiming to throw right into her mouth? Well, yes. And she did She did go, ah. So <laughs> it, it seemed prime for, for some, you know, popcorn straight in the gullet kind of thing. Let's see. Tulip wow. got a five out of a twenty percent. Is there? Oh, there is a throw stat. Okay. Yeah, I felt alphabetical on your character. Oh, success. Okay. So first, uh, with the wide open kind of hissing thing, it's doing a uh, uh, buttered biscuit, rum biscuit float goes right into her mouth, as well as a dog treat that Tulip just had, <laughs> and and uh. The mouth snaps shut and its eyes go wide and then it and you hear it scamper backwards into the room oh. um and down down the wall and then Hot dog, Evelyn, your whiskers are a success i'm gonna take that as a win that maybe its first meal was not human flesh so it does not crave it from this point on we may just need to feed it rum by the way tulip that's the kind of things that we're dealing with now so just kind of try to acclimate to it <laughs> Right, right. Um, this is my first time dealing with anything kind of supernatural. To be honest, you're doing great. My first experience involved like clawing at a, a wall that wasn't there. It wasn't great, so I'm proud of you. And I uh, want to kind of start moving in towards the window. <laughs> I mean, I've heard stories from Evelyn, but this is my first time seeing it. Ugh. It's... It takes a lot to get used to, and um, I will say, despite this being a couple of times on my record at this point, still don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. What should we do about this? Why has Mr. Corbett decided to house such a creature? I really want to know. Does she look familiar? I've never seen anything like it before. Psst, little but bits. Do you understand English? <laughs> and I'm just like leaning in the window and trying to yell at the little. Uh, it's chewing its biscuits. It looks yeah. up at you and then it looks back down and, and, and chewing at the biscuit. Uh, oh, I pull up my flask and kind of shake it and start kind of opening it. Mm -hmm. No response. Um, just then, awesome. right behind you, you hear a woman's voice. What in God's name are you doing? <laughs> Uh, if you look to your left, uh, next door to the house you are currently peeking in the basement of, there's a woman, uh, 54, Tulip. You know her to live in that house. That's Rebecca Wallace, who's the live-in companion of the older woman who owns the home. Rebecca, hi, how are you? What are you doing peering in? to Mr. Corbett's basement. She's wearing a floral house coat, one of those like sort of quilted things with snaps down the front. Ms. Wallace. Evelyn's like, I have that at home. Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> Rebecca. Go, go ahead. The strangest thing. Earlier, around dusk, I saw Mr. Corbett take out something strange. Now, I'm gonna... You. I saw something very odd. I needed to investigate. You know how I am. You know how I love a mystery. I will say this once and I will say this never again. You do not bring your ways of, of, of finding criminals every around every corner into this neighborhood. Now, we are, we are a nice neighborhood and I know that you have seen some horrible things. But that man, I'm now when... My husband died. He was one of the few people that understood what it was like and was comforted me. And he is still mourning the loss of his wife. And he doesn't need uh, three snoops peering in his windows in the oh, No, 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 this no, Rebecca. no. This We're not snooping. I love snooping. There was a cat. A cat ran in. Uh, and I've been, we were trying to. Come here, P puss, puss, puss. If anything, we, the door. 
you know my intentions are about keeping this neighborhood safe from criminals, from strange things. And listen, I know Mr. Corbett. I've known him since I was a child. I know he's a nice man. And I know he's mourning the loss of his wife, of his late wife. You have nothing to worry about, Miss Rebecca. We are just checking to make sure there's nothing odd about. That's all. A cat, you say? Yep. It hissed and ran, and I fed it a biscuit to get it to come back out, and we didn't want to knock on the door to wake up Mr. Corbett. Yeah, so um, the light is out now in the bedroom. Exactly. If it's just an innocent little puss puss, we can just coax it out and then go about our night. We're having a, a cards night, a ladies' bridge. While well, Evelyn's talking, I want to toss my flask into like the bushes around the corner just to make it the sound like, oh, there it goes. Hold on. <laughs> I'm some rolls here. I think let's start with uh, Tulip. Um, you're just trying to, I don't know, it sounds like a charm roll. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Cass, let's have you also roll for fast talk to see if you picking a flask out of your pocket and throwing it in the bushes uh, tricks Rebecca. I'm very bad at it. I did not do it. No, no, no. You just, you threw something. I know. How don't leave things in his bushes, Tulip. What? Uh, no. I got a 24. Charm is at 15%, so... Did not work, but oh. I'll take out a $5 bill. Miss Rebecca, I'm sorry to trouble you tonight, but please, if you would, <laughs> pretend you saw nothing. We're just trying to do the neighborly thing. Here's $5. She, she rushes over and she says, stop that. Don't you know Harriet is watching out the window? And she turns her back to the window. She looks you up and down, and then she takes the five and slips it into her housecoat pocket. Thank you, Miss Rebecca. I'm going to be keeping my eye on you three. And don't even think about doing anything like this to Miss, Miss Hart. She's a sweet old woman, and I'm going to bed. And she just turns and goes back inside. Good night. Good evening, Miss Rebecca. I'm getting my flask back. <laughs> that was a nice tactic, oh, yeah. going straight for hush money. I like the way you work, too. Um, well, why did we start with the truth? A little cash, if you know what I'm saying, Evelyn. Unfortunately, Cass, if you tell... Yeah, you, you've looked around this neighborhood. When you start shouting truth is usually when a lot of people either get killed or they lock you up. That, and if we're dealing with something... You know, hinky with the little ears for. Anyway, you don't want to loop people into that. So maybe be a little more selective with whom you share the truth. Well, you know, Matt, you know me. I'm all about honesty. I just want people to understand, and I I, I understand that this seems odd out of the norm, out of the neurotypical. And I suppose I, I need to alter my truth a little bit when when talking with a sense of a sensitive case like this. Uh, it's for I people's mean, safety. I mean, I enjoy lying for a myriad reasons. Oh, there's another hand. Oh, you know, no. And oh. the foot, the foot, and then the eyes. Can we get a size reference of this yeah. young woman? <laughs> So uh, these are, it's a adult woman's head. Yes. No body, but there is an adult woman's arm where the neck should be. And there are two, maybe let's say like a, a 12 year old boy size legs coming out of the ears where the ears should be. We're way too calm about this. Oh, the Feet are sorry. on the head. Uh, I told you. Hold you. Have, hold uh, you. I do you didn't have you roll about? for sanity when you saw the thing. Um, right. now, now that it's coming back and it's sorting, starting to sink in. Yeah, I went into shock the first time and then I really took in the parts and went, mm. huh, I can identify all of them and they don't belong where they are or <laughs> near each other. 
Um, sanity, here we come. Uh, so I've started to reckon with kind of what's happening. Uh, so you're good for now? Yeah, compared to last time, this is this is a, a, a tiny cakewalk. A, a whiskey cakewalk. biscuit, a whiskey biscuit stroll. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. five luck points to make it. Uh, not on a sanity oh, roll. Oh shoot! No. Okay, and they do oh, not. Make it. No. Oh, okay. Okay. That's all right. We're going to. You lose three. Yeah, that feels oh. right. <laughs> uh, Cass. You just, uh, yeah, you sort of, uh, hey, let's go with what you just did with your eyes. You just think for a moment. Uh, you start to fall oh. backwards. Oh, okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry I didn't catch you. No, it's okay. Um, There's shrubberies back here. It's fine. Did you find your flask? Oh, hold on. And she goes back into the bush. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Uh, oh. Cassidy, cheers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, honey. Should Ooh. we I'm gonna I'm gonna just start le leading a trail. Oh, just, let's oh. lead it out. Let's lead it out. I'll help you, Evelyn. What yeah. are you what is your plan? I don't Why know. Are you leading it out? I don't know. This is what happened last time, and it went very badly. But also, if it's, I don't know. Tell me what to do. I have too many crumbs. Uh, <laughs> as you're leaving a trail of biscuits outside the window, the and doggy treats and doggy treats. Uh, are you leaving them in, in the same line? I'm sort of just yeah. I'm, I'm just together. I'm working together. together. Yeah. We're just okay. laying a track together with with the hope that a plan gets invented quickly. Alternating, alternating. Yeah. Head sideways to squeeze out of the window. One leg pulls, uh, kind of kicks off the wall and the head comes and then the arm. It seems hesitant and yet <laughs> there's food here. Then it takes one and, and then next. Um, it doesn't really have a torso or digestive system and uh, as it starts to come out, I know. Also, where is it gonna? Where is it gonna go? Mm. Just in the back of the neck. There seems to be a little sphincter, a little sphincter back. There. <laughs> That's actually the worst part of this. <laughs> well, now we understand a bit more about its anatomy. Evelyn, I should do that. Evelyn. Yes. While it's distracted. Yes. In our treats. Yes. Take one of those those whiskey breads. Do you have your sleeping potion that you that you gave to oh, me? Yes, I do. I can. Yes, I'll put in the sleeping draft. Put in the sleeping draft on one of the treats. Lay it on the track. Let's see if we can knock this thing out. This yeah. one's extra special, and I pour a little bit more of um, tulips dog treats on top to make it look more like a little cake. A little pile, yeah. Yeah, a little pile. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wow. First monster roll. Let's see. She gobbles it up. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my stars and cards, it worked. <laughs> you see it sort of like turn abruptly. Uh, and with, uh, with its two legs and one sort of like tripod base, scampers to the right and then turns and scampers to the left and then looks at the treats and falls backwards and the eyes just shut. Oh, I think it figured it out at the end. That's not good. <laughs> that shows intelligence. That's very interesting. I'm gonna record that. Please, Please leave the moment. field notes for a later moment. Oh, I'm sorry. This is it's, what I do. You can see it and you take notes because it might come back. What I'm going to grab it by its 12-year-old boy ankle left arm and just hold it up. Okay. Okay. Cassidy. We got it. We got it. We got it. All right. Uh -huh. Now, Mimi used to have an old pupper. We we have the the dog cage for it still. We, we could put the creature inside it just, just to have it contained. I, I'm going to go grab it. Stay okay. right here. 
Are you guys staying in the street or? Uh, I don't want to stay in the street with this. So I'm going to follow her the moment I go, okay. And then just start following her. So we we'll go be right here. Okay. Putting we'll it under my Mimi's. Yeah. yeah Hunter, are you going back to Mimi's as well? I suppose I really don't want to be left alone outside. All Come right. on, Evelyn. Uh, you head back to the house. Can, before we go, can I take one last peek in the basement to make sure there's not more? Sure. Since we left the window open. Oh, God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Give me a spark hidden. Okay. I do not succeed. It's dark. I don't. That's all right. I don't yeah, see it's anything. it's very dark. You see uh, a door to this room. It looks like um, it, it looks cracked slightly ajar, and it seems it may be a closet in this sort of workroom area. There's there's just a bench. Um, and shadowy corners, plus kind of you're taking in a little bit of a foul smell in this room. Okay, I shut the door. The um, window, yeah. And, and, and then I take my elbow and I rub the latch um, just to get rid of um, any evidence that we have been here. And then and then I, I just walk back with my hands up because I touched someone else's latch. Did you forget your cane? Oh, it's on the under, ground. Under the arm. Under the arm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. As, as uh, the three of you head back into Mimi's front door, uh, Cass, you take one look over your shoulder and you see uh, the curtains in the picture window of the next door neighbor's house uh, with an old woman peeking out just close right in front of her face. Oh, that we're going to have to have a conversation. Ladies, uh, Yes. Let's get in the house really quick. And yeah. there's no way those neighbors don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't like that I'm still holding this. <laughs> it's, okay. it's snoring loudly. Yeah. I'll, take, I'll take the crate. I'll, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll, take, I'll take the creature. Well, no, no, no. Go get the crate. I just don't want to continue. You, this isn't all on you, Tulip. You put a lot on yourself. I meant to have that conversation with you earlier. You have a really strong, uh, protective and uh, like pr instinct and... I'm worried this isn't the time for this conversation. I'm trying to fill the void because I'm holding a thing I don't understand. Here's the yeah. crate. Here's the crate. Here's the crate. Oh, Here's the crate. The <laughs> yeah, the crate is in the basement too. If you go down, you find it uh, among some boxes. It's sitting just where you thought it was. And uh, you're able to put the thing into. We've got it a little uh, water bowl and uh, a little uh, bowl for. Um, Evelyn's famous, famous whiskey biscuits and some dog treats, and uh, a few more doses, Evelyn, if you, if you will, of yes. that, uh, just to keep it sedated. Sure, sure. I don't want to do too much, as um, it, it could be lethal in, in in inaccurate quantities. Well, I trust your measurements. So yes, at your discretion. Yes. Uh, Mr. Corbett may be a nice man, but there's one of two things happening. Either he's making them or he's protecting them. So. That's for sure. I mean, My money's think... not making. Do you leave the, the dog crate with the scampering woman thing in the foyer uh, where the oh, basement door no. is? We have an extra bedroom that no one is occupying. And we are going to take that crate up to that room and cover it with a blanket. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, would you like to rest for the evening and maybe pursue other venues in the morning? Or uh, would you like to hand back out into the night? We'll play cards. Did Who you wants you to saw sleep? something when we left? Who? Me? Oh, Cassidy. Oh, Cassidy. Mm -hmm. What were you saying? I thought you said you saw something when we left. Yes, the neighbor. Uh, closed her. She was watching us do all of that. There's no way she didn't see. I'm going to call it Jessica. <laughs> There's no way she didn't see Jess over there. Uh, she didn't scream, storm out, ask any other questions. I, I cannot help but believe that whoever saw me knows what's happening with your neighbor. Well, the night is still young. I say we go on over there and ask some questions. Are you down? To Corbett's? Not to Mr. Corbett's, but whoever the lady was, the neighbor, you said Jessica? Oh, no, Jessica, I've named the little, the leg 
This is named. Yes. The creature. Yeah. All right. This is how we get attached. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you you guys wanted to take it, but I'm gonna be the one that ends up taking care of it and feeding it gin. I mean, I think it'll be fine in the room. It is crated properly. It has food and water. Do we think it's smart enough to open up a dog crate and it, attack Mimi? Well, if it knows how to do it with its feet, I suppose it only it does have it has one, one hand. hand. You're right. That was under the thing. That's true. I, I forgot its too. throat was a hand. I have a padlock. I have a padlock in which it cannot undo the crate. I that might be wise. Out. Yeah, that might be wise. Good idea. Um, all right. While you, you while you do all of that fiddling, I'm gonna look in a thing that makes me feel safe. A book. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So okay, so Evelyn is going to retire, uh, per perhaps to the library within Mimi's yeah. house, or maybe you brought some uh, occult. I uh, usually I'm, bring it. It's my nighttime reading, and I'm gonna start looking up some necromancy or or the, the like. All right, uh, and Tulip, you have gone searching for a padlock somewhere in the house, uh, or maybe maybe give me um, an uh, an let's say a, a, an intelligence roll to see if that's something you brought with you. Okay, you had the forethought. Uh, intelligence, intelligence. On one of your main characteristics on the very top. You, so I think you have 60. Oh, yes. I got a 28. You padlock it up tight. And as you do, Jessica. <sighs> that sister, you hear just a, uh, a horrible sort of like... <laughs> excavating uh, <laughs> noise as uh, the teeth, which seem to be slightly rotted, uh, just bite right near the lock. Oh. Stand back, creature. It seems to be fighting. Uh, it, it was pleasant before, but something about being locked in a small cage seems to have angered it, and it is it is fighting and rattling the cage. With I've got an idea. I feel bad for Jessica. Tulip pulls out her harmonica and tries to soothe the beast back to sleep. <laughs> I think this is an important moment to remember that Cass Silverfish Sterling is the singer that is the hit of the Thirsty Fish. Uh, does she choose to sing at this time? And you don't actually have to. Do it. <laughs> no one wants that. But uh, yeah, I think I just start sort of vocalizing along with it and just trying to make like a soothing little lullaby out of Tulip's amazing play to just kind of calm it down. Okay, okay. Um, who's going to give me a role for uh, either Persuade or Charm on Jessica here? Uh, I'm down to roll charm, sure. if that's okay with you, yeah. Jess. Or you can roll for your singing. Uh, please Cass. do, please I do. just realized now I kind of named the monster after you, Jess. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. Jess, uh, Jess, uh, look at the paperwork. Uh, <laughs> but no so cigar. Sorry. Do we have cigars? I would like one. Oh, I'll meet uh, you I want an eleven, Evelyn. If you Mimi. want to smoke a cigar with me, Mimi would kill me if we smoked one of her cigars. <laughs> no, she <laughs> would be jealous and wishing she was partaken. That's what she would want. That's true. That's true. Let's but see. I'm in a library. <laughs> did, did anyone uh, fail us or succeed on their skill check? Uh, I got a hard success. Oh yeah. Oh, Jessica is making uh, those aggressive sounds slowly turn into uh, 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 like a uh, uh, yeah. calm down there 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 she just Song. nuzzles into the corner of her little new cage and goes right to sleep 
Uh, and there feels like a perfect place to take a little break, you guys. <laughs> Woo! You folks, beautiful people. Um, so we'll be back in ten minutes, so everybody can get a get a water or a different beverage and take a pee break. And you at home can do the same. Please don't go anywhere. We have more story for you coming so soon, and I'm going to be so tricky, even though you're going to see inside the machinery for just a moment. All right, friends, we'll be back very shortly. <sighs> Thank you. 
Welcome back. Thank you for sticking around and thank you for sharing your feelings on the word sphincter. I appreciate you. Appreciate you sticking around uh, for this bizarre story we're telling tonight. I want to take a moment to once again thank our fantastic sponsor, Chaosium. If you go to chaosium.com, you can use the super special code. And may I recommend, please, Buy your products directly from the manufacturer. One, because we don't want to give any more mus m money than we're already going to give to those, you know, few websites where we buy all of our stuff from and we'll soon own the world, even though, you know, that's going there anyway. But if you buy directly from chaosium.com, they do something really cool, which is if you buy the hard copy, you're going to get a free PDF version that you can access on their website, which I find very useful because I'm using the PDFs to have handy for my players to see digitally. But I love a hard copy. Uh, and tonight's scenario is the first in Mansions of Madness titled, Now I'll Say It. Mr. Corbett, I think that they have found out there is something unusual about the neighbor. Uh, so I'll give away the title of the scenario, but I didn't want to give it away too early. You know, what if they didn't think that was weird? Anything could have happened. Um, and just want to shout out one more time this new incredible product. There is a two volume series called the Malice Monstrorum, which is a, a, a two volume bestiary. I'm going in a fa out of focus because I keep holding things up. Um, so <laughs> maybe I'll stay in one one depth for a little while. Um, and you'll be able to see the Malice Monstrum, Volume 2, Deities of the Mythos, and Volume 1 is Monsters of the Mythos. Uh, and they're so beautiful, so fun. Even if you're not trying to run games, you just like to know about the Cthulhu's Mythos. And, um, I mean, these monsters that are used in, in so, like... Um, it shares so much lore with everything that is also related to Lovecraft. Um, it, it's really interesting to have on hand. Maybe you're just trying to get inspired for something else. You open to a page in the book or the Handy Keeper deck, and um, you're going to have ideas because they're beautiful and they're full of them. And then the Keeper deck has stats for your monsters on the back. Keep it easy. Keep it sleazy. If someone was like, Becca, run a Cthulhu game for me right now because you do that, right? You have a scenario off the top of your head, don't you? I'd be like, you know what? Fine. We're going to have this. Oh, yeah, this is what we're going to do. Anyway, um, just want to, all that to say, we love our amazing sponsor, Chaosium. And without further ado, let's bring back in our incredible investigators. I'm just going to bring them in all in once. Everybody, put your shirts back on. <laughs> you got to do the same order so you stop in the same spots. Okay. I can see you when you're off screen. I don't know if you know that. So uh, why did we all dress? <laughs> <laughs> you all had the same impulse. It's so strange. <laughs> There's something exciting about being seen and also not seen. Mm -hmm. Please do not perceive me. <laughs> Speaking of strange, you each wake up in a different bedroom upstairs in the Beale household. And uh, yeah, stretch. Did anyone choose to sleep in the bedroom that had Jessica in it? Not to be confused with Jessica, <laughs> the human. <laughs> I had the nice bed all picked out and then I got nervous. So I slept in the room with Jessica. <sighs> Perfect. I grabbed like three biscuits from Evelyn before though, just yeah. in case. 
who was the first to rise in the morning uh, at the insistence, the banging of, of Mimi in her bed downstairs? That would be me. Can't, uh, can't uh, avoid that noise. Sure. Uh, as, as Cass and Evelyn come downstairs, you find <laughs> Tulip in the kitchen, uh, I assume cooking breakfast, since, you know, yeah. the first one up. You got to do it, uh, perhaps making coffee or tea. Uh, Mimi, of course, is a big fan of uh, the oolong tea that is brought from Mr. Corbett from across the street, who delivers some loose tea leaves to her liking, mm. of course. Uh, every now and then, as he does, uh, as Mimi has told you many times, Mr. Corbett owns, he's a businessman, and he owns Corbett Importers of America. That's where the Oolong comes from. Mimi, I know you've told me this story quite quite a many times. Um, would you like any sugar for your Oolong tea? Of course I would. I'm dying. Why would I stay away from sugar? This could be my last cup of tea, my dear. It better be good. So you say. Here you go. Two lumps like you like it. And uh, I've got a tea for Evelyn as well and um, an espresso for Cassidy. Here you go. I, I might take an espresso tonight. Oh, don't Today. worry. I made an extra. Here you oh, go. Oh, bless you, too. Um... Yeah, Evelyn, thirty eight o'clock in the morning, I'd say. Evelyn still has like paper creases on her cheek from where she passed out in the library, <laughs> and it's just just indents. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so bright. Evelyn, um, once you uh, finally wake up, yes. you found anything last night? Please do. Oh, let, let me think through my pounding headache. Did I? Do you have a, a question that you would ask and maybe we can have you roll for library use? Yes. Um, I wanted to research necromancy. Um, and and if there is any examples of, of sciences um, of, of, of piecing together body parts. Okay. Um, give me, give me, do you have like a biology? You could roll? Um, no, I just have library use and I have chemistry as a science that I understand, but um, yeah, library use check. Okay, yeah, that is a, a very good success. Uh, 47 out of 80. Nice, uh, amazing. Uh, you have 80 in library use. That's this is what I like to do. My lack in physical constitution, you make up for in you know, ability to turn some pages. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you do find some medical textbooks. And Mimi was never married, uh, but she did have um, uh, many grandchildren that would come to visit her. And Tulip had a cousin that studied <laughs> Uh, the medical profession, and um, there there are some books on uh, just anatomy and reassembling. And, and you find um, in the back footnotes uh, an author that had um, some small text boxes about experiments in reassembling bodies. Oh, oh, by the way, check your library use skill if you would. Oh, um, and you find that there has been research done in this area. There is the possibility um, with delicate reconstruction of arteries, uh, blood can be repumped to an organ um, and, and make that limb usable again. Mm. Um, there's strong potential uh, ramifications for, you know, um, prosthetics or for people who've lost limbs of reattaching nerves. And that, that is what you find. That is what I found. Though, um, the, the, the lack of the amount of organs in the being that have been reanimated is the most alarming part. I could not figure out. I've drawn many, many anatomy sketches of where Jessica's organs might be, and they don't make sense unless there's a liver in the foot we, we know that there is a sphincter, so there, there is definitely some sort of intestinal tract. It's some, I, my brain, here, look at them. 
I don't want to anymore. Evelyn, on that note, you can determine that the things you read about reattaching limbs uh, doesn't it doesn't make sense given what you've no. seen. This is That's illogical, not. and and you make the deduction that there is something supernatural at work here. It's spooky stuff. So. Mm. Like those stories you've always told me. Well, what do we do with such a creature? Uh, while I think discussions about what to do with uh, Jessica are valid and important, I think our more pressing concern is with Mr. Corbett, who at any moment will notice that his it's missing incomplete person is missing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Shall we snoop? As as you are in the kitchen saying that, you can't see through the window of the parlor. Oh, but unless Evelyn moves through and, and looks at the window of the parlor. I, guess, I just want to see if he looked like he'd woken up. Oh, yes. You see him coming outside the front door, and uh, he looks frazzled and harried, and he seems to be peering in bushes. Um, he sort of walks a little ways down the sidewalk in the opposite direction from Harriet Hart's house, and... Then uh, he, he puts his cap on and um, goes back inside, just inside the door, grabs his briefcase and gets into the car uh, after locking the door and drives away. He's awake and he just left. He just he left. left. Yes, he got in the car. What are you doing? Are you bothering the neighbors? Not bothering, um, snooping, Mimi. So good. Yes, I do encourage a good snoop now and then. Mimi, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you have any old photo albums or anything where Mr. Corbett and his wife perhaps came over for parties or tea or any kind of function? Do you have any pictures of her, of his oh, wife? Be nice. Mimi's very, very old. Maybe like a daguerreotype or a tin type. Oh, right. I've taken a photograph here and there, uh, uh, Miss. Pass. Uh, did I have a photograph of of the wife? What was her name? Lynn or oh, I do forget. Uh, it's been so long. Yes, Lynn. That's it. No, no. I well, I do have a habit of saving newspaper clippings. However, I, I think. Well, you know, I dabble in this and that. As an heiress, I never much needed to do anything. Perhaps in fact, when I look her back, photo showed I... up in the obituary when when she passed. Well, mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure I would have clipped something like that. Yes, any time someone I know is in the newspaper, I clip it out. In fact, Tulip, I'm going to need you to look at today's paper and perhaps clip anything that seems interesting. As I think about it, I could die at any moment, and I will never look at them again. Of course, but Mimi. Anything for you. In the library, you'll you'll find some volumes. I've scrapbooked them all together. I'll go get them and stay here. Oh, what's that? Uh, what? If you find that oh, obituary, let me know. I decided. You'd think I'd be senile now that my body is falling to pieces, but I'm with it. I'll be with it till the very end. She sips her tea. You, you know, you're too old and mean to die. You're going to live forever. And you're just going to have to get used to that. And I'm going to pour her a, a morning tipple and kind of give her a little toast. Mm, cheers. I do Would like you it. like a little bit of the scale of the dragon? <laughs> Double me up. I'll yeah. take it. I want to start like pumping her for like hot goss about Mr. Corbett since they've been neighbors for a while. What would you like to know? So everyone in this neighborhood is a million years old. So I'm assuming you've been here and been neighbors and been friendly for quite a while. Yes, so, that's right. So he loves bringing you tea and vegetables. Did you two have a little something happening back when those old legs got out of the bed every now and then? Yes, legs have tried, let me tell you. But the man just doesn't seem to socialize much. He just goes to his, uh, oh, what is it? The, the businessman meetings in town, future industrialists of the world or some such thing. Uh, oh, I forget what they're called. He told me once. Uh, yes, I offered him. I spread these legs, let me tell you. And he just, uh, 
yeah. offered me vegetables in return. It's sort of um, his way of connecting, I suppose. It's almost what you asked for. Okay. Almost. Uh, then give me the cucumber if you know what I mean. <laughs> Sorry, but a woman's got to be a woman at some Thank point. Thank you. Uh, but other than being a thriving capitalist, did he have any hobbies that you know of? How he spent his time? It seems the greenhouse and his garden take up most of the time from what I hear. Of course, everyone in this neighborhood is such a bore. Uh, uh, yes, and, and I, I can't think of much else. Let me hear your newspaper clippings from this morning. Oh, is that <gasps> Abby and Zeke Winston? They seem to be throwing some sort of ball. I didn't get oh. an invite. Um, I'm does sorry. anyone want to do library use to search through these tomes? Oh, zero on everything. Oh, that's a 100. That's bad, right? Critical fail. I'm gonna say that you're uh, you're shaken when you hear uh, a it's a stomping above you. It sounds like Jessica is just rattling the cage and stomping on the floor of the cage, uh, and and you spill your tea onto the book you're looking at. Oh no! <laughs> um, tell me the year that you had opened, Evelyn. What year are we in? 1928. 28. 28. Um, uh, I was on 1910. Perfect. I mean, you know, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, Mimi looks up at the ceiling. What in God's green earth have you got up there? A man? A man just, trapped? Just a we cat we found in the road last night. It seems to have waken. All right. I'm going to go grab Evelyn, see if she's got any more of them sedation oils. Evelyn? Yeah. You, you, you walk in and she is just plugging her ears after the, there's tea on the book, but she doesn't want to hear Jessica jumping anymore. So she's just standing like this. Evelyn, dear, sorry to bother you. I know you're deep in research, but we have got to stop that thumping. I know. Um, I don't like it. Well, you got any more of them whiskey biscuits with a little oh. bit of potion? Oh, I, I'm afraid I don't have any more biscuits, but I do have the, the, the sleeping draft that I do have. No oh, then I, I do have doggy treats, and it does take well to these doggy <laughs> treats. So um, I seem to have good, destroyed. Evelyn. I seem to okay. have destroyed some of Mimi's books. Oh, it's okay. She don't, she won't mind. It's Are all you going. In, uh, library, so out of yes. your reach. Earshot? Earshot. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, so, Evelyn, um, you're welcome to continue looking if you like. And Tulip, you're going to go upstairs and try and knock Jessica out again. <gasps> Jessica, here you go. Range. Could you could you not? I just rolled a one now. All right. Yeah. Uh, come back in just a moment. Let's uh, Tulip heading up the stairs and into the room uh, with Jessica in it. Cass, were you helping to search or were you going to help feed? Uh, you know what? I'll go and help with Jessica just in case you need a little backup. All right. Uh, we'll come back to Evelyn in just a moment and see what she found on her epic critical success you've already checked library use but uh that's pretty baller um okay so as you open the door she continues to rattle the cage and she's just stomping she seems like she's fighting to get out of this cage and uh putting one foot and her single hand and trying to pry the bars apart to mm. steer and through them what do you do Tulip, I'll let you decide, because I... Uh... Oh, okay, okay, we're back to the same game. No, it's a bright, shiny day. I don't think that's gonna work as well as you think it is. 
Silverfish, I know you, and I know you have a voice of an angel. You better share them pipes right now and help me get this creature to sleep. Um, I don't think any of this is going to work because it's a bright new day and we need to feed her the draft to sleep. I put some right there in her bowl. She just needs to take it and with the sound of your soothing voice. That makes uh, me believe. I'm going to need you to give me a dexterity check to see if you can get this dog treat sprinkled with sleeping, um, like a sleeping serum and, and get it into the cage and into the bowl that has been knocked over and all this stomping um, or at least where she can get to it. 38 with a 70 cap. Okay, hey. okay great. That, that's also a hard success, I believe. 38 on 70. Oh, no, that's mm, almost not quite. Um, great. So we'll say you get it in there. And <sighs> she's going to see if she falls for it this time. She's not very smart. She <gasps> immediately stops banging and trying to pry out of the bars. And, and uh, her head oh. turns and she slams her head, <laughs> whole mouth oh. over the top of the cookie uh, biscuit and starts um, mm, mm. Oh, Did you hear that? that word? Word. She, she said a word. word. She said oh, more. All okay. right. Here you go. Did you drink? Hold on. No, I'm pulling out my flask and that's an open mouth and I'm going to say that that's consent to pour a drink. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you immediately see a dripping out of the. <laughs> I don't look back there. I've learned. Turgid sphincter. <laughs> I did not need to do um, that. As, as the, the smell starts to reach you. The sleeping serum seems to work on Jessica yet again. Oh, Let's cut down to Evelyn and I'm frantically cleaning the books. You rolled a one, yes. which is an epic success. Yes. Which means your girl Mimi has saved all kinds of stuff. <gasps> yeah. Yes. You just hear a, a high pitched shriek from Evelyn in the library. <laughs> Evelyn, can you, uh, how is this? Do you want to read it aloud? Sure. Corbett, Lynn Ann Myers, aged 22, died in childbirth in her home. A graduate of the Pierpoint School, Mrs. Corbett was married to local businesses, businessman Bernard Corbett. I suppose that's his first name. Um, two years ago, funeral services for both mother and child will be held Saturday afternoon. Miss Corbett is survived by her parents, Edward and Shirley Myers, and her husband, Bernard Corbett, president of Corbett Imports of America, Importers of America, as it were. Yes. Uh, in addition, very nearby in this handy scrapbook with all the information uh, about the neighborhood goings on, um, you find another. Nurse hospitalized after accident in patient's home. Professional nurse, Ms. Mona Dunlap. You all should probably get in here. There's some good juicy stuff. I think they're arriving. Uh, <laughs> was admitted oh, yeah. to Central Sanitarium yesterday following an accident that took place in a patient's home. Her condition was diagnosed as serious. Ms. Dunlap hired by Mr. and Mrs. Bernard <clears throat> Corbett to help with Mrs. Corbett's confinement apparently suffered a stroke while attempting to deliver the Corbett's baby unassisted. Mr. Corbett returned from his office Wednesday afternoon to find Nurse Dunlap unconscious and his wife and infant son dead due to complications arising from the birth. Doctors at the sanitarium say the woman has yet to regain consciousness and it may be some time before the full extent of her injuries are known. Both articles were dated. This was 12 years ago. My, Mr. Corbett is quite old. He's only in his 30s. Oh, oh that's a million. Oh. Unless, was, unless he married a, a, a younger woman. 
he was a very young man when it happened. Mimi can hear you reading the article from the next room. She's Hi, Mimi. In, was the dining room. You're in the library yes. study. Uh, yes, he was what? Young man, 25 then. Oh, oh, so sad. I just remember the number, 25. Wife dead, Chil a child dead. Nurse so dead? Yeah, where's the nurse? Where, what happened to Mrs. Dunlap? Mm. Well, I suppose she's still in the sanitarium, to the best of my knowledge. I suppose we need to take a visit to the sanitarium. Mm. Do we bring our new friend? No. Completely sedated, thanks oh. to your sleeping draft. Okay, but for how long? <laughs> yeah. Evelyn, what would you say that sleeping draft would last us? It lasted an entire night, so I imagine we have at least six to eight hours. That's true, but we can't discredit the fact that that might have been the creature's natural sleeping pattern, which aided in its sleep, which it now is exceeding that. But, um, you know, it, the, the effects of be the belladonna root are, are varying, and, and like I said, sometimes lethal, so... We don't know. Well, the other thing is, as far as I can tell and smell, the digestive tract is quite small, and so the sleeping draft might go through it quite quickly. Mm. Uh, did either of you remember to say the dosage that was appropriate? No, uh, I have not said it yet. Okay, let's, let's see then. Now I'm gonna say the unpopular thing while our keeper's rolling. Why are we keeping this monster alive? And what is my accent? <laughs> I love it. Well, um, I'm sort of not in the business of putting down an animal until it is shown to be um, unworthy of living. That is not an animal. That is at best a reanimated corpse. It's possible it's new science, which is always something to be explored at a certain extent. I'm with Evelyn. I think if this creature has intelligence, which it has shown us by saying more, I don't think it's right to just put it out of its misery. I feel like we should get an explanation from Mr. Corbett as well as get down to why such a creature has uh, exi exists. Okay. Now now, Silverfish, I see. I, I, I recognize that look, and I know you've listened to my stories in the past. And the last time I tried to keep a creature alive, oh, four people died. Um, <laughs> so, um, I'm just gonna throw that out there that I don't always remember the genre I live in, and um, that I, 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 I'm not going to do the killing, but um. And, and, and until it has uh, shown aggression. I will say, Cassidy, if it comes to it, I will end the creature's life. If it becomes a danger to us and Mimi. I hear you and I respect you and I respect your volition. And I don't mean to condescend, but that thing has clearly tried to bite your hand off. And if it wakes up and we're not around to control it, your grandmother is bedridden and will probably take the shock of seeing something like that running up on her much worse than we did. Well, I think at this point, maybe we should perhaps secure the creature in maybe a, how about the basement? How about we move it to the basement uh, for cement walls, um, four locks on the door and uh, uh, no windows, not like Mr. Corbett's, but uh, secure enough that I think it will keep the creature contained properly. All right. I still have a lot of questions about what our whole end game plan is because I got none. if it was me by myself, I would either put a bullet in it and send it on to wherever it needs to be next or, you know, dump it back in the basement because one basement is as good as another and give it back to Mr. Corbett because it's not my business. Uh, as you're, I imagine, uh, as Cass is saying all this, Tulip, you have gone upstairs and sort of like you're, you're, uh, uh, you're doing a walk and talk. Tulip, yeah. do, you, do you take the cage? 
I'll take the cage. Okay. Uh, lucky you, Jessica is out cold. Uh, the hands, the fingers are sort of like have fallen through the cage, uh, you know, of the arm that comes out of where a neck should be. Um, and the two legs are pretty cramped in there. I mean, it, it was a good sized dog that Mimi had, but it's, it's not a great for stretching Jessica's legs. I have a um, question. Yeah. What hand, uh, left or right, is coming out of the head? Right. Okay. I was going to check for a ring, like, or a ring mark if it was the left hand. Yeah. Mm. And, and, on, and on that note, I wrote it. it's left. Uh, <laughs> check. Yeah. It's a left hand. That's a left. fun reason. So, uh, retcon. Yes. Does it have, is it either wearing a ring, which I can't imagine it would, or does it have the like tan, the ring tan? Of Give me a spot in roll. Oh, sweet. A chance for redemption. And I made it 65 under 75. Ah, oh, check that box. And it doesn't have a ring. It doesn't have like a tan line, but you do notice a slight indentation underneath the knuckle to signify that there there was something wrapped around this finger for a long time. Hey y'all, that's a left hand and a ring finger and the imprint of a ring. So I just want to go back to the original thought. I, I know we were all thinking it. We all heard uh, yeah. Alan reading it. I think that's Lynn. So... <laughs> you, um, it was there there wasn't a picture in the obituary was there uh you rolled a one yeah. there was a picture of a dark haired woman uh and, and the face of our creature jessica sort of a distinct combination of, of jet black hair with these uh piercing green eyes and though the hair is extremely mussed and knotted and tangled and gnarled, Jessica's eyes are a piercing green. Well, despite all the blood shot around them. Okay. Well, Lynn, I'm sorry for calling you Jessica. <laughs> I think she's still Jessica. Just a personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to me. This is indeed some sort of corrupt version of Miss Lynn. Miss Lynn Corbett brought back to life. Yes. Um, I think it's best we go and talk to the nurse because this is a very interesting way to resurrect a dead love. Um, it, particularly the little boy legs. Yeah, I feel Where did those come those. from? What yeah. on earth? A little boy. You saw a baby hand earlier. I feel like we're putting a lot of this together now. I and know, but 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 it can't have been their child. This this child's legs must be about twelve. Their child died at, at an infant. So let me throw something out here, friends. What if we go straight to the horse's mouth? I don't think we need to solve this mystery anymore. I think we need to figure out from Mr. Corbett. Honestly, just Cassidy, what he's doing. I'm with you on that, okay. Silverfish. I'm with you on that, Suge. I think we, I mean, it is the morning. M Mr. Corbett said he would meet with me this morning. I'd like it if you both tag along with me. Absolutely. All right. Off to Mr. Corbett's importer's business. Okay. You're heading the to the locks up the basement and secures it with all four deadlocks, and uh, the girls go off across the street to Mr. Corbett. I, I think the the basement may just have a normal uh, within the door key uh, within the knob, but uh, there is in the hallway beside the basement door a rather large piece of furniture, just sort of like a chest of drawers. I'm just gonna move that. Let's move the armoire. Right in front of the door. Um, and as you're walking out, the library is on the other side of the foyer from the parlor. And you see a scrapbook that's lying open as if it's the last one that Mimi has been working on, Evelyn. And you glance back and you notice one more article 
uh, that is dated from three months ago that mentions a local man arrested in animal slayings. A suspect has been arrested in connection with a rash of pet kidnappings. Although later released for lack of evidence, Randolph Tomaszewski is considered the prime suspect in the recent disappearances of nearly a dozen dogs and cats from the home's uh, around surrounding Central Hospital. Tomaszewski is an employee at the hospital as an orderly. Many missing pets have been discovered later in parks, usually mutilated or partially eaten. Public outcry over the atrocities has been strong, and police hope they have uncovered a lead that will eventually allow them to close this case. That's uh -huh. disturbing. Perhaps unrelated, perhaps not. But um, as you head to... Maybe he had a couple of practice tries. As you head to uh, out the door, Mimi seems to be already back asleep. Uh, her tea has sort of fallen off the the hospice bed set up in the dining room and, and <laughs> rolled to the floor. Um, and uh, you head out into the day. I think that, Cass, you drove, right? Evelyn mentioned that. Um, so you have a car. And as you drive into town uh, or towards the warehouse district, you do come across, um, it's not a huge warehouse district, warehouse district in between Boston and this small suburb. And uh, as you drive around, you do see Corbett Importers of America. It's okay. around 8.30 in the morning at this point. Okay, what's the plan? I say we go to the horse's mouth, just like you said. Let's find Mr. Corbett. I mean, okay. This, this might be an instance for a, d alarming truth. Noted. Well, Catch him off his more, game. Both of you have more experience in this, so. Uh, Talking uh, to people? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if Cassidy and I have to do the talk in Evelyn, that's just fine. But for sure, anything knowledgeable that you might know of if there is a fact what needs to be said, you better believe your buttered biscuits. I will say it. <laughs> As you walk up to the warehouse, there is a big garage door that is open. And it's not overflowing with people. It's just a big empty warehouse space with boxes. And there's maybe um, four men that you see uh, in various parts of this big uh, room with, it seems, some closed off spaces towards the back that are just moving boxes from place to place. Some are using crowbars to pry open boxes. Uh, most of them have a cigarette hanging out of the side of their mouth, and none of them seems to be paying too much attention to the three of you. Are we going to try to... I love the idea guys just standing here. Just a, I'm going to go try to bum a cigarette and make a friend. I, I will also go up to uh, the first person I see... Uh, open in a box. Hey, lady. Haven't I seen you? Are you a singer? Oh. Uh, so <laughs> hanging out of us now. Sweet. Indeed I am. Do you have a light and a cigarette? I can bum. I don't. You're a pretty lady like that. Sure, I got a cigarette for you. Here you go. And they say Shalori's dead. Do they say that? I hadn't heard nothing about it. Oh, what's your name? My name is John. John, I was wondering if you could help me out. I am in the market for some, you know, just really nice imported rugs for my uh, boudoir's decor. Oh, well, typically Mr. Corbett, well, he just has us deliver to the shops in town. Mm -hmm. You know, the funny thing about the important business, let me tell you. Uh, and he just gets closer and closer and uh, blowing smoke in your face. You bring <coughs> items to the store and the store sells the items. Oh my God, that's riveting. <sighs> there is a couple rugs over in that corner of the warehouse and uh, boys and I go on break around noon. Sometimes we leave the door open. And the rug here or there, no one's going to miss. Uh, I want to lean forward and uh, I'm going to take the little like silver fish hook off of uh, like my dress and like lean in and put it on his lapel. You have been so helpful. And if you ever find yourself in Gloucester, you swing by the thirsty fish and tell him Cass sent you. Boop. Oh. 
<laughs> is it? Well, hey, why wait till then? I mean, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm only in town for a little while, but you know, why don't you come on down to the bar and see me sometime? Hey, a little while. I mean, you're gonna need to. Uh... Wait, 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 why are you walking away? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Just... well, all right, then uh, I'll come by. Thirsty fish. I remember that. Nope. And then his foreman walks up and uh, pats the, you know, hits him on the back of the head. Work, kid. Sweet. And then I immediately like, chuck the cigarette and I'm like, that was disgusting, but I am going to take those rugs that were offered to me. <laughs> They're out of there on their break. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's mid morning. Um, and they seem to know you're here, but no one's really telling finely dressed women to leave. Uh, this warehouse. The foreman's watching you all. The one that came in sort of reprimanded the guy who stopped opening boxes. I didn't help at all. So do you want to just go in the front and find Corbett? <laughs> or towards the back? I don't know how warehouses work. This is too legitimate for me. <laughs> um, it's just one big room, you know, like 30 feet high. And far in the back, you see two little offices sort of cut out, it seems to be, uh, with a shut door. Should we go see if the boss is in? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. As you walk towards them, you see one says, uh, President Corbett, B. Corbett. Uh, and then a smaller one with the door open. You just see uh, a man you don't recognize working at a desk. He seems to be, um, he's got a... a tie and he seems to be um just sort of rubber stamping a bunch of papers in the other room Sweet. come in hello sir i'm looking for a mr colbert uh is he in oh sorry i thought you were knocking on the other door the closed door um uh, next door thanks colbert <laughs> <laughs> He heard the original knock and he had just gotten up and peeked his head out. Tulip. Good morning, Mr. Corbett. Uh, his eyes darted around to Evelyn. Yes. Remember, you said you'd meet with, the, with me this morning. How are you, Fish? <laughs> Thank you so much. Would you um, like to come into my office? Yes, please. Yes. Thank right. you for your hospitality. Yes. Um, um, these are my Step dear friends, in. Evelyn Ward and Cassidy Silverfish Sterling. Um, Absolute pleasure. You take each of your hands. Uh, no. I know you might be busy with work here, but I uh, we have a few questions for you. Oh, well, we are having a busy day, and I do need to do some bookkeeping. But, uh, of course. For a neighbor, I, I could um, spare just a moment. Ah, a delivery's coming soon, though. Very soon, yes. Uh, you're feeling well, your, your grandmother? Uh, yes, Mimi's doing great. Uh, spry as ever. Now, Mr. Colbert, when I uh, came across you yesterday, you seemed to be in a bit of a, in a tiff. Uh, you see, we know what's been going on here. We have your creature. Had to explain, Mr. Corbett. I don't know what you're talking about. I am a law-abiding citizen. I am known to the police here. I am friends with many at the sanitarium, those in charge of committing and I don't know what you're talking about. And I now- I think you do, Mr. Corbett. I think you do. But we found this creature out in your basement late last night. It crawled out. It came to us. And uh, we have it at Mimi's as of right now. Now you better explain yourself or you will not see this creature again. Oh, but uh, I found her. Where? I I... In, in, in India. 
with my father. Well, you see, that is, that is um, my father went for trade. It was the same trip, unfortunately, where he passed. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for the loss of your father, Mr. Corbett, but there's something strange about this creature. Its anatomy, its face, its left hand. It seems oddly familiar. <laughs> Looking like your late wife, Lynn. Tulip you just named all of the parts of that of that creature, by the way. <laughs> its face, its hand, its baby feet. You all know that. Uh, actually, Mr. Corbett says, yes, and her sphincter. Oh, ew. Disgusting. Sorry. Oh. I just, I didn't know. I, I thought, what an exotic creature. I uh, should bring it back and perhaps um, a collector would be interested. But then I've grown attached. I, I, I well, of course I noticed the green eyes, but it, it's not as you think, no. Oh, it's not your wife? Uh, you really should be going now. I, I do oh. have a shipment. Perhaps we could speak later at yeah, home. I'm going to turn and lock the door. Yes, Mr. Corbett. Slam the cane on the ground. Yeah. Speak now. Did you really find this creature in India, or have you been messing around in some dark arts? I don't know what you're talking about. I, do, I don't know what you're talking about. I have done nothing wrong. I... All I do is I grow vegetables and I give them to my neighbors. Mr. Colbert, I know you've been doing it for years, taking care of my Mimi. I'm just trying to understand how and why you have such a creature in your possession. I'm a good man. I'm a good man, Tulip. You know that I'm a good man. I've watched you grow up. You played in my greenhouse as a girl. I do remember that. I have fond memories. But... I recognize that it's strange, but I wonder if you will keep my secret of this strange thing brought back to life. Brought back to life? I thought you said you found it in India. Oh, we can stop talking about India altogether now. What'd you make? <laughs> and there's the rest of her. Then, just then, he starts screaming the names of all of his employees. John, Bartholomew, William, Buckley. <laughs> <laughs> and he screams and he starts to pound on the locked door. Uh, and John, with his crowbar, comes and, and dislodges it open. Uh, unless anyone would like to try and do something in the meantime. I'm going to pull my gun out. Tulip and also level it at his face and holds it at the door. John, you're gonna want to back up and take your break a little early today, love. You better step carefully because right oh, now, uh, think, uh, what do you want for lunch? Is it gonna be ham or is it gonna be uh, and <laughs> you, you see them look yeah. over their shoulders many times, but. They're holding blunt weapons, and y'all are holding ranged weapons. So, um, don't bring a stick to a gunfight. And I'm just gonna <laughs> walk the door. Say, Cass. <laughs> you know and what's up? Tulip, you're doing a great job. Keep going. I got you this. You see, the rugs are unattended. Ooh, rugs. <laughs> I keep going back and forth from like the guys to the rugs. Oh, you know what you can do. Uh, gentlemen, if you would be so kind as to load the rugs into the car. Thank you. Thank you. Evelyn, would you be so kind as to explain to Mr. Corbett what you found in Mimi's library this morning? Uh, gladly. We found her obituary, and we also know that you have been feeding local animals to Lynn. No, 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 no. I, I, I wouldn't do such a thing. Oh, that's and you also framed that poor gentleman for the murders of those creatures. No, no. Uh, that uh, Before I even met uh, Randolph, he, he was in trouble for such things. Then oh. did you hire him to collect the animals for you to feed her? 
He has quite an appetite, we have discovered. Uh, There's only so much that dog treats and whiskey biscuits can satiate. Uh, he's going to leap through the open door and attempt to grab the crowbar. Oh. Can I, can I attempt to do something as well? Sure. I want to trip him with my cane. Yeah. All right, uh, so we're technically entering into combat at this moment. So let me quickly fight, 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 fight. It's about um, to be a girl fight. I should tell you, he's about five, six, maybe six, seven. He, uh, five, five, seven. He's, okay. um, you know, a, a, a small in stature gentleman, and um. Yeah, he he uh, he leaps for the crowbar on the floor and sort of uh, uh, splats it and trips over his own feet when trying to grab it and, and falls to the ground. Uh, as Evelyn, do you want to roll for fighting and tell me if you're successful? He's dexterity. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you get a bit of a surprise attack because um, he didn't really. Ooh. Okay. Um, so that's and it's like an exact success. Okay. Uh, so, um, for my fights, since he has tripped himself, right? He is fl flat on the <laughs> ground. Um, yeah. I want to like stick my cane in the hand that was reaching for the crowbar to pin it to the ground. <sighs> Yeah, uh, I'm, I imagine uh -huh. there's a, a tip on it, like a wooden tip. Um, yes, it's a metal tip. Mm, okay. This is part weapon. All right, and now uh, we'll go into dexterity order, and Tulip is yes. fastest dex dexterity. That's my role. Uh, what, would you, what would you like to do before that? Uh, a cast as you as well. You can tell me before we actually roll for it what your intention is. Both of you are holding your weapons. Mm. Uh, I got a 26 70, uh, for 70 dexterity. Um, so actually I, rolling, um, depending on what you tell me you'd like to do, but we can hold on to that 26. Okay. Uh, so I, um, I, I push the crowbar out of the door and I shut it again. Okay. Okay. So you're going to take a maneuver. And then uh, before that happens, it, it depends on what cast decides to do. Uh, the order in which things play out. Yeah, uh, if I see you like doing the obvious move to like get the crowbar away, uh, I'm going to step out of the door and be on the like opposite side of it and like help you reshut it and just watch the boys and make sure that they don't try anything cute. That's my girl. Yep. So I'm just on the other side of it. Like, all right. You can keep working or you can leave, but if a cop shows up, I will find you. Nobody likes a narc. <laughs> Have we invented the word narc yet? I just did right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they had all been lingering outside of the garage door, just smoking cigarettes and looking back at the door, trying to like figure out what they should do. But you do see um, all five now of the men, because there was four in the warehouse and then the guy in the office, um, just standing in a circle and watching you. And then they nod vigorously and look look down at the ground. Um, but none of them seem to be running away right now. Uh, and Tulip, you are able to slam the door shut. Mr. Corbett is lying on the ground and we'll say, combat's essentially ended because you kind of got him in a position. I don't understand what you want from me. All right, Mr. Colbert, I'll tell you what I want from you. You're going to go down to the sanatorium with us. Um, Tulip pulls out a pair of handcuffs that she keeps on her person from her bounty hunting days. Um, and she'd like to cuff Mr. Corbett. Okay. Um, yeah, you're able to cuff him without... Uh... Uh, you're holding the gun and the handcuffs and Evelyn's got the cane on his hand as she releases it to put yeah. his uh, behind his back, um, cuff him. Um, he's crying softly as you do. And you don't understand. I can't help you. I, I, all I can do is, is keep living my life. I don't know why this thing came to me. Uh, Not your lives, Mr. Corbett. 
Do you, do you walk him to the car and you're headed to the sanitarium? Yes. Should we go get Jessica? I think so. Uh, once, you guys, once you guys come back outside, uh, Cass is just mid like, and that's the reasonable case for women's suffrage. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, how'd you do? <laughs> Great, we're gonna go pick up Jessica. And um, honestly, I, I just kind of want to see these two reunited. Um, there's a lot of crying and fluids, and I don't like it. Oh, oh. don't good. worry, Cass. I got a top that we can lay in the back seat. Oh, sweet! You could just put it on the rugs. Did I successfully get the rugs in the car? I would have wanted to bully them to give me rugs. Yeah, you make John carry it. Uh, let's yeah. see if you can. Um, uh, you are holding a weapon and they're unarmed, but let, let, let's see how much um, you convince them with Persuade to carry the rugs. Yay! The uh, in lieu of Persuade, can it be Intimidate? Oh, yeah, absolutely, that's even better. Sweet. I just nudged that bad boy up. All right, um, okay, no, I definitely have to spend points to, to make it on this one. Can I spend six points to make yeah, it? absolutely. Okay, all right. I I don't know, man. Just get out of here. What are you doing with him? I, I mean, we gotta oh, we're just going to have a talk. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Citizens arrest. But I wasn't kidding. The thirsty oh, no. fish. Come on by whenever. Thank yeah, you. I'll be passing on that offer. Thank you. Yeah. Did you want the blue rug or, or, or the red rug? Yes. Gentlemen. Look, I sell alcohol during prohibition. Do you think I care about stealing these rugs? I want them both. Scoop. They carry the rugs to the car. Uh, where do you put Corbett? In the back seat. Okay. Uh, and who's running in the back seat with him? Someone uh, with a weapon. Me. I am. I'm Perfect. sitting next to Mr. Corbett. This is so. Oh, how the hell my uh, my car? Uh, you've left it behind. All We're right, taking so. you to Lynn. We've named her Jessica. Mm. Oh, that's better. I uh, called her Squabbles. Squabbles. <laughs> you okay. are the worst yeah. wizard I have ever met. You've got two rugs in the car. You've got some kind of weird wizard in the back seat. <laughs> and you pull back up at, at Mimi's home? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh. This is ridiculous. This is utterly ridiculous. Um, and, uh, you're, you're in front of, uh, both of your homes. Let's okay, see. so is someone going to go grab Jessica? Yep, I'm going to go. Bye! <laughs> uh, I'm going to run inside and see what, what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, Mr. Corbett attempts to open the door of the back seat, um, it's just barely afternoon at this point, uh, I would say. And uh, he's not successful in trying to get out of the door. Tulip, you see him do it and sort of uh -uh, point the gun. Um, Don't think about it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to need uh, – who's driving? Cass, you're driving. Can you roll um, for luck to see if anyone in the neighborhood notices this uh, – this sort of like their friendly Mr. Corbett in the back seat with a gun to him? And then <laughs> – they don't see a damn thing. No, they see it. Damn it. <gasps> can you push? Oh, it's a luck roll. Yeah, yeah can, can you push? push? A, can I push a luck roll? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the way you said it, but I'm going to do it. I don't think you can. I don't think you can push. How do you uh, uh, make yourself a little uh, less obvious in order to push? And Did you make your eyes and saying, that's not important. Is that a 97? Oh, Cassidy. Uh, the local, uh, the local, I want to say constable, but that's not a word for 1920s neighborhood cop. It's the neighborhood cop uh, pulls up next to you and gets out of the car, steps up. God's name is going on here. Oh, 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 oh,
doing? He reaches for his uh, uh, his billy club. Really? I'm gonna reach for a weapon? What's um, his badge read? Uh, his badge says that his name is um, the thing I wrote down. Uh, his, his name is Bilmer Fudgens. B. Fudgens. Uh, uh, Bilmer Fudgens? <laughs> All right. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. No notes. <laughs> Fudgens? Fudgens. Fudgens? Yeah, Fudgens. the New England Fudgens. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. No, Bilmer, the, the local cop, he, he checks in on, on the neighborhood pretty frequently. He knows me. He knows Everybody me. step out of the vehicle, please. Fudgens, Mr. Fudgens, hold, hold your horses. We've made a citizen's arrest. I have my reasons. What you say, you take this uh, this $10 bill here and you go about your business. <laughs> he steps closer to the vehicle and he peers in the window and he looks in Mr. Corbett's eyes. Uh, and uh, he is not having that. Uh, get out of the vehicle. Is he, su is he sufficiently distracted by looking at Mr. Corbett and Tulip? And uh, not looking at me directly? He's... He's leaning past you, in, uh, but through your driver's side window. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would like to do a hurt, please. I have a very tiny gun. gun. I have a very Thank tiny you. gun. And I would like to use it. On this cough right now? Yeah, I'm okay. so sorry. I mean, okay. Yeah. I, You've. Fuck the oh, police. I just, you know what? <laughs> Roll for firearms. Yeah. I'm so hurt to Bilmer Fudgens here. I'm so sorry. Bilmer is a beautiful, perfect name. But I got a 12 to shoot. Okay, so he's leaning past you to make eye contact with the people in the back seat who he knows as a neighborhood cop. There is the granddaughter of someone he knows well and a pillar of the community that delivers uh, vegetables to the precinct. And as he's stating all this and asking what in God's name is going on. <gasps> oh, 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 sir. Oh, oh. Stumbles back oh. as a pinprick size hole in his chest starts to drip Blood and he, blood starts to spurt out of his mouth. The, Corbett, the, but I just, Monday is bridge. And he falls to the ground. Oh, Cassidy, no. you didn't oh. have to shoot him in the chest. You could have shot him in the foot. What? No. Shooting him in the foot means I still get hit with that billy club for abducting a man. I'm on the wrong side of the law constantly. And there's only one way to deal with a cop that did not look like he was going to take your $10 bribe. Well, listen, Tulip. this is your mess. So you clean it up before Evelyn gets back with the well, creep. I didn't even want to go inside the bait as she goes out and starts like dragging him towards the <laughs> trunk. And like, now on my rope, I hope the red rug's on the top. <laughs> uh, you know how hard it is to get blood out of rugs? Because I do very well. Now you're going to have to make me <clears throat> get Evelyn to get some gloves on, to use the hose to wash the street. As all this is happening, Corbett is rocking back and forth saying, oh, no, oh, no, oh, sir, no. Uh, don't you worry, Mr. Corbett. I'm not going to kill you. I just want to see if you're right in the head at the sanitarium. Evelyn, you successfully went. Uh, you were able to, um, with some difficulty, struggle to get the armoire out from in front of the basement door. And as you got into the basement at the bottom of the landing, Jessica has not moved an inch in, in her cage and you're able to pick it up. Um, I imagine you're, you're able to come back out unless there's anything else you wanted to do inside. Can I check if she's breathing? 
With what looks? <laughs> Magical ones. Supernatural ones. Ones that exist in a different realm. <laughs> Sorry. She has a face. I imagine she has somewhat of a nose, like just feeling for the air. She has a, a, a adult woman's face, and when she's asleep, there there's something very peaceful and beautiful about her. Um, aside from all the sort of like bile and muck in the cage at this point. Mm -hmm. And as you reach down and slide your fingers through the cage to just hold them, hover them just under her nose, you don't sense any sort of life. Damn it. Well, now I gotta do CPR on this thing. Oh! I gotta open the cage. This is gonna be horrifying. I'm never gonna get over this. I think I'm gonna die. Sure. Let's say that the padlock, um, you all knew where the key was. You you left it in the top drawer of the armoire. Um, yeah. Uh, sure. You, you, uh, You're not gonna believe it. There's a death in here. <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna do a CPR. I'm gonna try to resuscitate Jessica. Okay. Um, I think this is gonna be. I mean, uh, medicine. But if if you would prefer first aid, I'll allow for that. I have first aid, and I do have a medicine kit as in my possession. Sure. Um, do we see Evelyn <laughs> attempting to resuscitate yeah, the creature? You guys are dragging no, I'm in the body. basement, and, and you guys are hiding a body. Uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, this car is very good at hiding oh, bodies. Uh, <laughs> you're with your own stuff. Tulip, you're still in the back seat with gun to Corbett, and <laughs> well, the two of you yell at each other about what would have been the right um, thing way to go about this. Yeah. Evelyn. I want you to describe to me medically how you attempt to give CPR to a woman's head that has two legs <laughs> and <laughs> oh my God. Well, I had already drawn a bunch of schematics of what I think her anatomy might be. So um, I start pumping the soles of the feet to get some blood moving. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> and 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 likewise, like sort of when you're trying to keep an animal, like, like, like when you're trying to keep a small animal CPR, it's just sort of a lot of like repeated pressures. Um, and, and 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 that is what I'm doing. Um, because there is no clear heart, there is no heartbeat, there is none of that. So, uh, just keeping the body. Uh, uh, I, I I am I am simulating a heartbeat to pump blood again. Uh, uh, Lord, oh I'm going God. to need an extreme success on a first aid roll to resuscitate this scampering woman thing, <laughs> aka Jessica, <laughs> aka Lynn. Yes. Um, because Evelyn's thinking, I don't want to be responsible for a murder. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do it. Oh, I'm pushing. I'm pushing. That's bad. That's really bad. Uh, 99 or 100? 97. Okay, you can push. Yeah, I'm going to push. Go, oh, baby, go. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. oh, that's so much better. 27 out of 51. Wait, is that an extreme success, though? Oh, wait, no. did I need an extreme success? What What's considered an extreme success? Um, Sorry. Uh, sorry, I didn't make that clear. So on your character sheet, next to every place where you could put your skill, which is a percentage, because we're using D100, um, there's also two smaller boxes on the side. Yes. The top one is one half of your skill, and the bottom is one fifth. And in order to achieve a sextre extreme success, you need one fifth or below. And as you pump these feet uh, and continue to pump when you feel no signs of life, the eyes are wide open and rolled back so far, you just see the whites uh, 
and you pump the feet more and more and more and it's they're spurting out of the sphincter uh, uh yeah the more you pump uh which is the way in which you push um and you attempt to to squeeze up and down the arm nothing jessica's gone and i scoop jessica i run into this car and i look <laughs> at mr corbett and i say jessica has passed how did you resurrect her the first time Uh, yep, you run uh, out the door. Mimi is yelling. Oh, I, I, I think I have to roll insanity. I just think I do uh, about what just happened. I was overwhelmed by everything going on and forgot this was a mechanic of the game. You <laughs> attempted to resuscitate this thing and it sprayed such grotesque materials. Um, I would like you to roll for sanity Thank you. Uh, because you've never killed before. No, you've seen casualties. But you, they've never been at your hands, and you feel this, responsible here. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know how I missed the dosages um, at all, but who, who knows? Well, I think you gave the bottle to, to Tulip. Ah, ah, Tulip. <laughs> we got to teach you how to use teaspoons. Um, I'm okay. Weirdly... Weirdly, I think I've reached like that level of things are so out of out of out of my comfort zone that I reach like a weird zen. Um, because I have things on me and smells up my nose that that I I have reached a level of just absolute calm in the face of horror. Listen, Evelyn has seen some shit. Yeah. Okay. So literally out of a sphincter. Uh, uh, do a, I imagine um, you you're facing her face, so you put your arms underneath the legs as the other yeah. her arm dangles down your chest, and uh, you're running out, <laughs> looking at her face with the eyeballs rolled backwards in it. Um, as you run, I support her head because yeah, I don't understand this neck situation. I hold it like a baby. Yeah. But with. Only but, but with the oddest of limbs. Yeah. And uh, as you run out, you see yes. Cass has a uh, driver's side door open, uh, is struggling on the other side of the car. You can't exactly see what. And Tulip is just in the middle, uh, in, in the car, in the street, gun to Corbett's head. And Corbett, uh, and, and Evelyn, you said you jump in the car? Yes. Jessica? Okay. Yes. Uh, anybody say anything? Yes, Mr. Corbett, answer Evelyn's question. How did you resuscitate the creature last time? Scamperoo! Sc I forgot what I called it. <laughs> <laughs> Scuttles! Something like that. Oh, uh, his hands are behind his back. He can't reach for her face, but he looks like he wants to. Oh, Scuttles. No. Ugh. I yeah. tried to resuscitate. How did you do it? But this, we have to get out of the street. You've just, your friends have just killed a man. Cat uh, slams in the trunk and then takes out like a, a big bottle of just like hooch because she transports it everywhere. And wherever the blood stain is in the middle of the street, she's just gonna shatter the bottle there. So people okay. just think it's like an alcohol spill and then hops in the car. Hey, oh, what's wrong with, what's wrong with Jessica? Sorry, did you just say you killed a man? Yeah, there's a dead cop in the trunk. I'm, Sorry. Pull into my driveway and let's go to my laboratory. Oh, now wow. we're getting somewhere. I agree. Yeah, yeah okay. It's <laughs> turned me 20 feet and go apart. <laughs> then talk in the trunk. I guess that's fine. <laughs> Bring him inside. No, he's heavy. I need. <laughs> Do you think that Scudders is the only thing I need to feed? Feed? Ew! Explain yourself. Okay. What? Well, hold on. I'm going to repark and back in. So it's like five feet easier for me to do this. And because he doesn't have control of his hands, he's like, oh, hitting his head against the side of the car um, accidentally as moving with the... <laughs> Six. Yeah. My 38 point turn because I'm bad. 
Uh, I've checked and Miss Hart is uh, not being her usual snoop self right now. She must be busy inside doing something else and, and no one seems to see you. Uh, all right. So uh, please, if you would, if you could undo these restraints now that we all seem to have some sort of unsavory, um, uh, well, guilt rather, I should say. All right, Mr. Cassidy, I'll undo your restraints, but remember, I have my gun pointed at you, so don't you try anything funny. What, 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 um, sorry, what, what else are you feeding? That was, that seemed like an important sentence that we need to circle back around to. This is too important. Someone could see at any moment. <laughs> is no one going to help you with the car? Um, um, the cop car is still um, behind where your car was uh, with the driver's side door open. Ooh. Evelyn, I'm going to need you to do me a favor. Yeah. I need you to put on your sanitary gloves and you're going to take my pistol. I'm going to help Cass deliver this body over to the greenhouse. Or was it the laboratory? Uh, Mr. Cass, Mr. Corbett, are you going to revive this police officer? Is that what you were insinuating? Absolutely not. No, he's definitely dead and he goes into the greenhouse we bury him there let's go well, uh, well my greenhouse is very special uh, just oh, uh, who's going to help carry here my wrists are very sore well you lead the way i have lost well, you two carry the body and i'm gonna go pull the cop car off to the side and park it so it looks like he's doing a lap around the neighborhood Okay, cool. Do you park right. it like just at one house down or like next No, I'm going to go like around the corner. Okay. Like I a street over. I like to touch the dead body, but yeah. I believe Tulip is strong enough to be able to carry it on her own to the greenhouse. You can kind of just drag it. Yeah. Cass, no one sees you get into the car uh, that you see. Um, and, and you're able to just give me a driving check, uh, yeah. given, given your nerves at this moment. Doesn't mean you're not able to do it. We'll just see what happens. Shoot. Uh, I got a 48. I needed a 40. Can I spend eight luck points or not? I think what happens is you drive up over the curb. Yeah, that feels <laughs> right. <laughs> leaving, uh, cutting through the grass and leaving tire tracks. Ooh. And that would end up being um, in right in front of Mimi's house. Um, but you do get back on the road and are able to pull around the corner. Uh, Tulip and Evelyn. Uh, Tulip, Mr. Corbett, now that you've undone his wrist, is helping you with the body. Evelyn, uh, he, he's sort of like, oh, no, a lady shouldn't. Um, even though uh, he can see that yes. Tulip is very, very uh, odd, odd morals there. Thank you. I'm, I'm liking it. <laughs> I Despite all this, I, I do consider myself to be a gentleman. Now, if we could quickly get the I've body heard. Yeah. Yes, both bodies. And you're still holding. Um, I'm, I'm holding. It's like a to toddler in one hand and a pistol in the other. Do you have a... Oh, did you take Tulip's pistol? T Tulip told me to grab the, uh, their pistol so that we could, uh, so that they could carry the body. Awesome. Okay, Um, I, I rolled and no one seems to be noticing what's going on in the street right now. Thank <laughs> God. Get on you. Thank God. Okay. Um, the heck indoors. <laughs> <laughs> he he's, he scrambles for his keys at the front door and drops the cops. Um, um, let's see if you were dragging the head side. Uh, and sort of uh, hits the cement stoop. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. You won't mind. And then he unlocks the front door. And as you go inside, um, you're you're inside the Corbett home where few have been. Um, for a long time, let's see. I think I have a picture of the the ground floor here. Um, there is a mud room with a closet, and uh, so you can see the stairs going up. And then to the left, there's a sparse living room that has um, uh, a few armchairs, a table with just an empty cup sitting on it, just a single cup, and, and then a big desk with many files next to it, many books in this room, sort of. Evelyn, uh, you notice especially that there is a, an extreme abundance of literature here. 
with many different titles. But he has you keep going through to the kitchen and out the back door where there are stairs down to the basement. Uh, Tulip, he sort of like leads the way with the body. Evelyn, Mr. do you call it? You don't seem at all bothered by moving a dead body. It's like you've done it before. Oh, 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 no, no, I haven't. Actually, in fact, uh, he needs to roll for sanity. <laughs> it's nothing I've seen before. At least it's not that I have knowledge of seeing. Um, except for my father. When Your father? Oh, not in my hands, no, but... Oh, when Ramasekva came to our ceremony in India and came upon my father and ripped his head off, uh, yes. Yes, it would all changed at that time. You understand. You've done this, or at least helped. Um, Actually. <laughs> and uh, he starts to take you down, down these steps in the basement. Um, you see just mostly empty rooms, just a big cellar. Uh, it seems to have some food reserves and some old barrels. And then uh, you see the shape of the room that must be what you had peeked in from the outside. And that's where he's bringing you towards. Uh, are, are you still following? And then Cass, I, I believe you probably parked by now. Do you, do you want to do anything as you get out of the car? Um. If I just I'm scanning the neighborhood to see if like anyone's noticing and then just heading back. Actually, I want to go to the greenhouse. I want to go check out the greenhouse before going inside the house proper. Okay. Good question. Is Mr. Corbett leading us taking the body to the basement? Yes. Yes. Okay. I guess that's where we're going. Uh I am following as I am the one with the pistol protecting my dear friend Tulip, but I do want to do a quick spot check. I rolled a 25 for spots hidden, which is my exact thing. Sure. When you were upstairs and yeah, the with the okay. library looking for, he keeps talking about ceremonies. Does he have weird artifacts? Does someone ripped his father's head off? Like what is who? Absolutely. We're walking into a lot of uh, bonkers. All right. So <laughs> on your spot hidden check. What's that? Oh, did you already roll for spot hidden? Yes, I rolled a 25. And that's a just a regular success? Yeah, that's just exactly what I have. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, roll for spot hidden. Uh, yes, inside his living room, you find... Mm, mm, yes, you find a series of books uh, around the... Uh, desk as you as you search you notice um, a well-worn copy of something called true magic by Theophilus Wynn uh, a, a large crudely fashioned book in cobra skin that seems most unusual called the key and the gate and you recognize uh, uh, can you please roll for Sanskrit yes I can Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna push. Not push. Uh, luck. I mean, luck. Sure. I'm gonna pay. So, what is it? Sounds great. I'm gonna pay seven. All right. Uh, yes. Okay. So you grab this book that you you recognize the title in Sanskrit, and for some reason it seems remarkable to you. So uh, even with Jessica, um, legs over your bent arms and uh, cane under one armpit, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, you can. You can. There's a lot going on in my arms. Uh, unless you want to stop to read it, you can. You can take it with I'm you. I'm scooping it. Okay. Great. Uh, so, Tulip, you have headed down to the basement, and uh, he opened the door. You thought it would be that same room you'd seen before, but there is a bigger room on the other side of it. And as he opens it, you see gleaming metal. There is a steel workbench and uh, what seems like a surgical operating table in the middle of the room. Um, as you walk further in, you see a tall double-doored metal 
sort of filing cabinet or some sort of cabinet, uh, like a wardrobe, but made entirely of metal. Um, and with you, he places the cop's body on, uh, sorry, Bill Murr's body onto the table. And then let's just pop back to Cass, who's outside. Oh. And uh, can you give me a stealth check just to see if anybody, uh, you, you were successful in moving the car and you got out of it. But when you come back, we were actually on a trip on that street. Uh, no, I got a 45. You did not succeed. I, I did not succeed. You see myself. a paper boy on a bicycle with a dog on a leash. And he seems to be really precariously balancing leash and basket and uh, um, throwing papers at each door. He looks down at the broken glass and red liquid in the street and then looks up at you. And then he stops. Say now, uh, does that look like blood to you? Yeah. Like what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what? As she's like wiping her hands and smoothing out her dress and uh, walking over. And I want to like, as I walk past him, is there a way for me? Like this dog is kind of tugging at the leash. Yeah. Like not super well. Contained on the leash. Uh, yeah, he's tugging on the leash as he has uh, the kid has one foot down from his bicycle, and the dog is pulling towards the broken glass and liquid in the street. Mm. Oh my god! Oh, my, uh, what what could that possibly be? Alcohol in this nice neighborhood? Huh. Fast talk. Oh God, I'm so bad at this and I keep making myself do it. <laughs> no, I, 75 doesn't match the five I needed to get in Fast Talk. He I looks at you this. with the utmost suspicion. Lady, what is going on here? Uh, and he looks over at Corbett's house and the door is open. Mr. Corbett, he saved me as a boy. And something, something happening to Mr. Corbett. What do you know, lady? You look like you know something. And the, oh. uh, the dog, a uh, pit bull mix with gray coat, uh, very short hair, starts pulling towards you, um, just sniffing the air. Yeah. Hey, um, I want to ask kind of a, a, feel free to say no. Any chance... Since I was on the Jessica vigil overnight that I would have had one of those dog treats in my pocket for just such an occasion. Give me a hard luck roll. <laughs> oh God, I have it. No. Oh my God, I got a three. <gasps> yes. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to assume that you had put some of this sleeping serum on all the dog treats as you slept in the room with the vicious monster. Yeah. And I want one to just uh, fall out of my pocket as this dog pulls towards me and I just kick it with my toe over enough so he can get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Fido falls for it. Uh, and Hey, hey now, did you, Fido, don't eat that. And the dog gobbles up the treat. I've just spent my whole time uh, looking for my own little mink poodle. It's a poodle. Her name is Scrabbles. Why is that the only name I can think of? Scuttle. <laughs> what, wait, what was the name that Corbett used? Scuttles. Scuttles. My little dog named Scuttles. And that's what I was doing outside. I don't know. If you think there's something wrong with Mr. Corbett, uh, we could, I don't know. Do you want to come inside? We can go check it out. He's such a lovely old man. You bet your bottom me and Fido are coming inside. Mm -hmm. And then he looks to the dog who is just laying down in the middle of the road, Fido. And he goes to him and starts to shake him. And that is where we will end our story for the evening. Oh, God! No! <laughs> well... There seems to be more things to uncover. Um, 
so proud. Like how we're going to get out of this one. I think it's <laughs> great. I gave a dog a nap and I think we're good. I think I, it's I also love that this is just, we're, we're killing so many things with this thing that I feed your Mimi all the time. <laughs> I think this dog is fine. It's got like twice the body mass of Jessica. That's so. true. A lot more organs to siphon through those uh, chemicals. And more structural integrity. And <laughs> much farther from mouth to sphincter. Yeah. It's got to be like half of it. I uh, wow! This uh, was so much fun. Um, such a pleasure to have you, ladies, here. Um, I love that you you found many of the things that um, I I wanted you to find, and yet none of them in the way I thought you might find them. Um, <laughs> No. Nope. Uh, for people, mythos, horrors, or cast, Arden Henry would love to know. Um, <laughs> were we the horrors all along? Okay. <laughs> That's for uh, no. the outer gods to determine That's because true. this is a Cthulhu game. And whatever happens, you know, uh, maybe maybe you were possessed um, by some otherworldly dimension. And um, friends, uh, I'd, I'd love to talk about some time when we can uh, re revisit this adventure because... Um, I really so want to know. I, I got to know what happens. This is, this is the weirdest game of Cthulhu I've ever played, and I'm so in it. Like, thank you so much. Uh, that means so a lot. Was my first one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just like you were crushing it the whole time. Yeah. 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 Yay. Well, yeah. Killed it. Oh, Yay. darn. I, I love Tulip. So uh, thank you. I would kill or die for Tulip, and I'm not happy with that. You did. <laughs> That makes me so happy. I'm um, like, whatever we decide, I'm like, yeah, Tulip, you decide what, what we're doing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, we're in my neighborhood, so you exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> Y'all are amazing. This was so much fun. I was looking for the specific name of the author, but there's no specific name at the beginning of the scenario. So we'll just go with all these wonderful names on uh, uh, this book. This is from uh, Mansions of Madness and madness it has been and will continue to be. Wow, such a pleasure. I wanna make sure um, that we have a chance to say uh, to everyone, all the things that you're up to, where to find you. Um, and oh my gosh, I just, I, uh, this is probably the hardest I have laughed was um, picturing uh, Gina's character in this basement trying to revive the oh um, overdrugged, very lightweight, <laughs> <laughs> uh, scampering one woman thing. Um, <laughs> Skulls. Jessica Lynn. Um, all right. Uh, well, let's, she's beauty. Let's she's grace. There's. She just two pretty legs in a face. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice, nice. There's the singer. There's the bar. Love it. So, um, Abria, this, will you please go first? Tell the people where to find you, what you're up to, um, and uh, where to find you on social media. That's the same thing. You get it. Hi, <laughs> Hi I'm Abria Iyengar. Uh, when I'm not doing dog naps. Uh, you can catch me on social media at Quiddy, Q-U-I-D-D-I-E. I said too many Ds, it's fine, don't worry about it. Uh, you can catch me on Mondays on D&D's Twitch channel playing Rhyme of the Frost Maiden with the Roll20 crew at 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and on Fridays, you can catch me with the amazing Gina playing uh, Failed Save, which is a D&D fifth edition game. Um, other than that, I have a podcast called Storybenders where we uh, dissect episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender. And I have a bunch of very cool, very fun projects coming up soon. So just watch my socials for that because I don't know what I'm allowed to announce because I don't check my email. Hey, you know what? Love that. <laughs> it's not life. That's I feel my favorite like energy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, thank you, Bria. Jessa. Hi, I'm Jessa Day. You can find me on my socials, Twitter, YouTube. I don't think there's anything on there. Uh, Instagram <laughs> and Twitch at Jessa Day. Um, I'm a variety streamer. I do music, ukulele, guitar, singing. And I also play a lot of video games, especially Overwatch, Among Us. All the games, love games. 
uh, Love Games with Friends. And um, you can also find me on Void Cat Gaming uh, every last Saturday of the month doing a TTRPG called Occultation, where uh, Erica Fermina and Sunny Seely, we get together, uh, Rachel Seely, we get together and we uh, do also spoopy mystery things. And uh, it's been ongoing for like six months. So. Love that. What is the um, play set? Is it oh, D&D? It's, a, it's, a, it's something that Sabrina, Voidcat Gaming, curated. So it's an entire original world and everything. Yeah. Uh, in a fictional Ash Falls, Oregon, uh, we are the Ash Falls Investigation Club. And it's kind of like a very, like, Ghostbusters, Scooby-Doo gang. Like, somebody comes with a mystery and we go and solve it and find out what's going on. Got it. Less fingers and head top. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby Doo, where Scooby Doo was too afraid to go, y'all. <laughs> Give us the butthole cut, Scooby Doo. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you. Oh. That's a horrifying thought. Gina DeVivo. Yep, I have to come after Sphincter Cut. That's <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Gina DeVivo. You can find me online at Pocket Gina. You can find me at the aforementioned place. Pixel Circus with the lovely Abria and a, a lot of amazing other people. Anthony Carboni, Sage Ryan, uh, Xander Genre, uh, Kaylee Bray, uh, Vince Casso, incredible people. And then if you like Star Trek, we have a show uh, called Clear Skies over on Q Times. Um, it's every Mondays, uh, every Monday night. And it's a lot of fun. And we just came back. Our first episode was uh, two days ago. So... Come, come check it out. Watch the VODs. Be a VOD squad and join the Ox crew, and it's really fun. And what else? Do I have announcements? I also don't check my emails. Um, oh, uh, on Q Times, I, I do, uh, I, no dates announced, but we still have two more craft streams to fulfill from our amazing donations. And um, so, so stay tuned to my Twitter for that, because um, I'll be announcing guests and what we're going to be crafting and craft along with us. I love that. Yes, Gina, you're the most expert crafter. And it's really cool to watch you make something out of, you know, a piece of felt. Like your ceiling. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Love the ceiling. ceiling. Oh, my God. The ceiling's beautiful. It's All right, favorite. friends. Thank you so much for accompanying me in this weird, weird journey. Uh, we'll see if we could do it sooner rather than later. Get to the bottom of what Corbett's been up to. Um, feel free to stick around yep. for a little bit if you like. And uh, thanks again. Just going to quickly one more time say a huge, huge thank you to Chaosium. Head to chaosium.com and use our promo code, the Kalix, because you can get 10% off. 10% off, and who doesn't love 10% off? Um, again, want to highly recommend the newest product in their line, the Malleus Monstrorum, which is a two-volume series of bestiary of the mythos. You can also get the Keeper Deck version of it. Oh, gosh, this is what I just opened to. Star Vampire. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Absolutely horrifying, as I hope this game has been for you in, in the funnest of ways. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, let me say, uh, Black Lives Matter also, you know, it's a game and uh, we, we don't want cops to die either. And uh, love you all. And please wear masks and uh, take care of one another out there. Let me quickly uh, pimp my own stuff. Let's see, Saturday right here, you can find Gameplay Live, um, which is a live board game playthrough show. We get together this weekend. We are playing uh, Between Two Castles, Mad King Ludwig. We've got Avril Illage and uh, two guys from um, a channel called Roll for Crit that uh, 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 named Jonathan and Will. So that's going to be really fun playing with those guys. And... Um, what else? Uh, please check out our Star Trek Rewatch podcast called To Boldly Watch. It comes out every Tuesday, and it's on any platform where you can find uh, a podcast. All those places, To Boldly Watch. Anyway, um, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.